Do you know Jimmy Lee? I do know Jimmy Lee. He keeps <laughs> calling me. I get a call. <laughs> you don't say. Dude, J- yeah. how you does he say. have time? This man has so much damn time. We got them texts. It, it, there's texts. Let me read. Let me read. Let me read. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, first off, how Jimmy Lee spells please is PL. PL call. Yep. Yep. Uh huh. Call with a bunch of L's. Important. Call me, period. Important. So I, I guess I got to call him back. It's important. No, you uh, don't. You want to call him right now? I know. I... <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not going to call him now. <laughs> Basically, what happened was I filmed the documentary with him too. But the problem is, and I talked to him last week, he kind of went behind my back and made a whole different documentary. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, he didn't. So, he... <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I love Jimmy. He, you know, it was a, I would have made a great film, I think. But we were taking too long on the edit because I had to get it, it just takes a time. I, I think he was oh, very anxious. Wait, so you had very spent anxious. significant time with Jimmy creating a similar style documentary as Boogie's? Yeah, maybe wasn't as involved, but we had spent we shot for four days. I love Jimmy. He's probably gonna call me uh after this. Uh during this. I, I he owns and we you talked now. I talked after because he put out this documentary, which it was it was good. I, I think Hold that, on, bring Jimmy do, on. I have to job. ask him. I feel like he really fucked up. He, he didn't tell you he was working on a documentary concurrently, because that's a little that's a little until I saw the until I but until I saw the trailer, I think he just wanted to move quicker than I was able to move. He is a very hard worker. Uh, you know, and uh Unfortunately, I don't know what I'm going to do with all the footage now. You know, because can I? He literally remade the exact scenes that they went to the same places. Oh, and God. It was, it, it just wasn't. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? This is a replica. <laughs> of- you know, I was going to say that I, I don't know because, like, first of all, the one that went out was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. But I am curious about because I feel like you're product is more polished more professional no disrespect to the other guy uh but i would watch it still yeah i i would check out i i watched it and i'm like hey this is good but it's basic it, it was basically pre-made but fast i couldn't have probably got it out as quickly because we shot in like july and or june and um it's you know, I probably would have, it would have taken me a year because it, it, this, the level of editing it, and, and if you have other projects, it just takes, takes time. Especially yeah, if I'm of course. Edit. Yeah. Documentaries yeah. are, are difficult and long and but hard. I love Jimmy, Jimmy, when you call me, I, you're a great guy. People love you. Uh, but unfortunately I don't know what we're going to do with this documentary. But <laughs> oh no. We don't know. So you must've lost a lot of money on that. Just sunk time and money into that. <laughs> It's mostly time. I mean, the, I, I have some other businesses and it pays for the travel and, and oh, okay. other things. That's um, good. But I'm just doing this for fun. I mean, I, I, obviously if it gets used, uh, that's cool. But I, I started doing this cause I, I, I want to do, do some stuff for fun. So. How are you feeling? I mean, the, it's really taking off 1.5 million views. I mean, that's pretty tremendous for your first yeah, I tr- mean, video. It's, uh, it, it's, it's just probably the most fun week of my life, honestly. I mean, uh, uh, I, I was I, I I was thinking maybe pull a few hundred k. I know he would he, he was going to promote it, um, uh, and I, I thought maybe two fifty three hundred thousand would be cool, and then do another one and, and try to try to grow. Uh, but after Penguins <laughs> dropped his video, it was like you know ah uh, that did a lot of movement for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did, I, there was Jimmy. one. Oh yeah, Jim. We brought. I had to bring Jimmy on. Sorry, Mike. I had. I just. Right. I just have questions. I have to call him back. I have to call. Yeah. Him back so anyway. this. I mean, you can do this. Basically, this serves two purposes. You. This is you calling him back. Let's, let's knock it out. Let's knock it Jimmy. out. Still call him later. <laughs> oh, I. I have a question, actually, Mike. <laughs> because <laughs> the, the doc. Hold on one sec, there, Jimbo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jim, Jimmy, Jimmy. 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 How the dinner. fuck, Jimmy? How the fuck do you get in a hold of every damn person in my life? And I just met this guy. I even know this guy. How? What the fuck, dude? Well, he's a son's a bitch because he did the documentary and he didn't put it up. 
Mike, all right. Mike. Alex, <laughs> Jimmy, him. Jimmy. So I shot this, and this dude's calling me like the week later. When can we get it out? Can we ex? I mean, I'm like, I need time. I need time, and you know, dude, and then dude, I, you he, shot it like four months ago, and you didn't do nothing. Come on, Mike. Jimmy. I, well, I shot. Dude, come on. Hold on, hold on. These things take Jimmy, time, Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy no, hold you. on. You really fucked him over. You know that, right? <laughs> Mike Klump was supposed to be my buddy. But he didn't. He just didn't. Uh, he he didn't get the documentary out. Then the other guy came in, and he did it like right away. I'm not mad at you, Mike. But we had a we had a you know. I know what I'm saying. Listen, I have no hard feelings. If I Mike, lived in the area, I would go do with... it still. Hold on, one at a time, Mike. Go ahead, go ahead, Mike. Jimmy, I have no hard feelings. You did what you did. I think we're gonna hold on to the footage. You're gonna the more famous you get. We'll drop this documentary in like three, four years. Who knows what's going to change in your life? I don't know if he'll be alive Mike, listen. then. Mike, listen, why don't you just his drop age. it now? What are we waiting for? Well, Jimmy, unfortunately, you replicated all the interviews and the whole story arc that we shot uh, with this. Other. I, I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad. It happens. Some of you do a project. You got to turn it off. But, but uh, Mike, you can do a different angle. Do a different angle. Yeah. What well, kind of ankle did you have in mind for him, Jimmy? Well, if he watches the whole documentary that Alex did, he can just use his footage and do a different angle. He has different <laughs> stuff. Like he didn't do my brother. I don't think, he did a lot more. Jimmy, unfortunately, that's not how it works. That's not. We were at the White House. No, hold on, hold well, on. We were at the White House sub shop. You interviewed Cousin Freddy. Alex never interviewed Cousin Fred. You have a lot of different stuff, uh, Mike. You really do. Uh, hold on, Mike. Jimmy has suggested that you use the footage from the other documentary. Is that something that you can do? Typically speaking, best practices for documentaries is to not take from another documentary. That's generally speaking. <laughs> Jimmy, do you but, understand uh, that? Say it again. Do you understand that? It wouldn't really be ethical for him to steal the other guy's footage and just pawn it off as his no, own. No, I don't want him I don't want him to take anything what the other filmmaker did. I wanted him to use his own footage because he has a lot of different people that <clears throat> Alex didn't do and he could create his own story on me. What do you mean by your own story? I want I need Well, there's different people being interviewed and we did different locations. We were in El Molina, we were at the White House sub shop. <clears throat> Mike, your response. Jimmy, I <laughs> Unfortunately, I think, Olivia, I think Olivia will agree with me on this. Olivia, your Maybe. response. Jim, I don't know if you want my opinion on this. She was Ooh. crying at your documentary, but I think she's retracting those tears now, Jimmy. No, the tears, <laughs> the tears were real and Tears they can't exist. be retracted. I just, I don't know, Jim, if I'm being honest, I think that you should have let him know that you were doing another documentary. It's okay. I listen. It's okay, Jimmy. I love you. You're a great <laughs> dentist. You're a great entertainer. And you're going to get so no, hold you're going to get more famous. You're going to keep getting hold more it. famous. In and my, we're going to drop this defense, way down the road. <laughs> in my defense, uh, Olivia, mm. I reached out to Mike several times. And you I definitely did. To many, do many, it. many, many. Several hundred. And, I believe that. And, <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> and he said, you know what that's like. And, and he, didn't, he didn't do anything. And then this guy came along, Alex. And he wanted to do it right away. So I, I did it with someone Jimmy, who was going to do the documentary. Jimmy, you have to reckon, though, with this uncomfortable truth that you really did fuck over Mike. Mm -hmm. No, I, I really did it. Because he... Because no, I reached Jimmy, out him several times in. and he didn't do anything. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Jimmy, he came to you. He said he invested a significant amount of time documenting it. It's unrealistic for you to expect him, a serious documentarian, by the way. I don't know if you watched the one on Boogie. It's really, really good. It has 1.5 million views. How much does your documentary have, by the way? You have 1.5 million views, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> well, then you have to do, then you have to do my documentary, Mike. Hey, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> Mike, it's a no-brainer. Oh, my God. Mine only has 30,000. Thirty thousand. Wow. So, huh, it sounds so like maybe you. Uh, so do you see what I'm saying though? Like up, Jimmy, he you snubbed him, and you should have at least told him, Jimmy, that you are working with another documentarian. 
Okay, well, maybe I owe you an apology. Maybe you're right, Ethan. <laughs> and, 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 on a serious note. And does that apology have to anything to do with how you learned how many views that his documentary got? <laughs> Say that again? Does the apology you just gave him have anything to do with your discovery of the amount of views his Boogie documentary got? Well, I didn't know anything about it till you told me, but... I had reached out to Mike even earlier today before I even knew you were even going on to call me because my documentary is out and I wanted to ask Mike if he wanted to, to do mine. So this just came to me just now. So no, the very answer is I apologize to do that. Because maybe I should have told uh, maybe uh, I should have told go, you. Mike. Uh, uh, Jimmy, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. Uh, Jimmy, uh, it's very polite of you to call me to ask me if I wanted to complete the documentary. <laughs> Uh, however, given the fact that uh, the other documentary replicated all the scenes we shot, uh, unfortunately, I don't think there's enough original content to make this engaging. So I do right. think we have that to. Seems fair. Well, let me. Uh, that seems fair. Let me ask you this: Did you shoot with Mott's boss? That's there. There were certain things that okay. were just not curious. Included. Just curious. I, I wasn't. Yeah. Jimmy, by the way, I don't, we're, think, we're, we're, I don't think Ethan he met mozzarella boss. I so may, so well maybe. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh my! Cut, cut to Jimmy's camera. Um, I would say that Mike might have an interesting vertical with <laughs> Mott's boss, but that was actually already done by the other guy. Right. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. Well, well, <clears throat> Jimmy, unfortunately, <laughs> Jimmy, unfortunately, I hate to tell you, but I really think you missed your moment here. And I got to tell you another thing. I think you're really blowing it with the Bobby Lee thing. And I, I'm trying my best, man. But uh, it's just you're making it very difficult for me to, to turn you into a star. Now, I. I wanted to apologize because I had given Zach dates and I just, I couldn't come out, but I'm trying to come out. I'm trying to come out the first week of December. Mike, you know but about this story? I, I'm not familiar. I, I, so, I, I yeah. So What's Bobby Lee is a friend of mine. I texted okay. him and I said, please do me a personal favor and have Jimmy Lee on your podcast. He says, okay, okay I'll do you. I will do that for you. Yeah. Jimmy Lee now, as we're trying to schedule it, has told us that the it's, it, place, it, it's not it's worth it. coming it's out here crazy. just for Bobby's show because he's not big enough. Oh, Bobby Lee is not big enough. Not well, for listen, Jimmy. Well, listen, the Jersey outlaw, he's got a lot going on. He's running multiple dental practices. He's a <laughs> That's class true. comedian. Good he's got to be selective on who he books with, and Bobby Lee, frankly, just may not be at that he, repertoire. He, he, he's on. Let's be real. Bobby Lee is not what he used to be in terms of, uh, you know. Actually, that's not true. I feel like Bobby's more famous now, or more kind of cool than he's ever been, even despite yeah, being like absolutely. sixty. Jimmy, I would highly recommend going on the Bobby Lee show. That's probably. I, I will go on. <laughs> If, can they get? Can you get me on Ethan the beginning it, of December? It, it, this is what you can't fucking comprehend for some reason. Let, let me lay it out for you, Jimmy. Uh, they they had certain dates that were available. You offered it's some no. dates. They went back. It it's just not working out. I told them. Okay. I apologized to them. I said, you know what? Maybe let's just try again after after the no new problem. year. And uh, yeah, okay. It, it's can, more. It's that's mo fine. It's more of a when they're available type of thing. And can you? Can, I understand. Can you please just please? comprehend this that they this is how it is i know you've been reading comments to get you on bobby but it, it the time does not work the 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 opportunity i get passed. it it's not going to happen i it's, got you zach all right very all right. Cool. Well, cool cool so um well listen i hope i'm gonna keep talking to mike i'm gonna say goodbye to you jimmy i hope you but guys before you say goodbye to me could you put a good word into mike to maybe do the documentary <laughs> maybe in the future <laughs> <laughs> sure, Jimmy. Maybe Mike. Zach could talk to him. Uh, yeah, I'll do it. Mike, um... <laughs> what do you think, Big Mike? What do you think, Big Mike? <laughs> a free sub at the White House sub shop, Mike. Oh, Mike really? Too. A free sub? It. It's the White House. Two subs. On the house. 
Oh, I'm in. Jimmy, I'm in. <laughs> well, let's go. Come on, buddy. A free mozzarella lesson. All right, listen, Jimmy. Uh, please. Jimmy, I'll call you. You're Listen, you have an amazing career ahead of you. Uh, oh, and I do? I'm, this is it, it, it just that was nice to you. Chapter. Yeah, so, I love you. I love you, Mike. I hope you're not mad at me. I love you too, Jimmy. I had fun filming, and those will always be great memories. Hmm. All, right. All right, buddy. I love you guys. All right, Jimmy. Thanks, Jimmy. Jimmy. Thanks, Where are you, Jimmy? By the way, guys, thanks for all the love on Monday. Where are you? I'm in a, I'm in a <laughs> restaurant called Addo Lamberti's, but I had to go in the back. It's too noisy. Wait, so where are you? Back. Where do you say? Birdies? I'm at an Italian restaurant sure he'll have dinner called Adam Dude, I love that like I feel like you're in a restaurant like 80% of your day it's really good here yeah I see alright <laughs> Jimmy uh, we'll talk soon I'm sure peace and love guys love you <laughs> alright peace and love Jimmy. love you bye Jimmy alright Le Sorry. leave it off the screen for a second here. bring okay, thank you. Mike bye, on kids. the call alright bye bye what the hell man I cannot believe that Jimmy somehow is ingrained himself. So, like, how does he do it? I don't know. And Mike, Mike, you're you're a, you're a saint for the grace that you handled that with. I, I don't think I could have been that nice. Oh, Jimmy's great. Okay. Jimmy's great. Uh, you just have to know how to set your boundaries. Uh huh. Uh, you got to hit the "Can I call you later?" and just let the 15, 15 Zach texts come needs in to right learn from you. But Mike, Mike. Here's the fucked up yeah. thing. You're going to get five more calls from him. Probably about 15 yep. minutes. You yep. just... and, and we have mute. We yeah. have mute. <laughs> we have mute the text. Yes. So that's, that's what we do. You just... And we move on. Sure do, we keep Mike. it moving. The thing is, no, like, when, sure when dealing do. with Jimmy, Zach, I agree with Mike. Mute the text. Mute the calls. And then when you want to talk to him, you reach out. Yep. Because <laughs> Jimmy would be on the phone with you 24-7 if you'd let him. Yeah. I knew something was up when I, I called him to give him an update on the project, and, and he didn't pick up. Because then mm. I was like, hey, oh. I'm finishing up this boogie. And, I'm like, and then I texted him, and I got left on red. I'm like, something Ooh. is something fishy going on. Jimmy Lee is not calling me and answering my, my text. I mean, either that or he died. And I saw the poster, and, you know. So, but That's I would, a, you know, everyone go check out. Check out the Jimmy Lee documentary. He did, Alex did a great job, and uh, it, 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 it was well told for it. What a guy. Well, as you said, uh, as his fame grows, the demand for this uh, documentary will only increase. So let's get back to Boogie, though. Um, documentary wars that Jimmy Lee has caught himself in the center of a hurricane. Old timey turned into bad timey. Jimmy Lee has absolutely. Is his career in, in peril? I don't know. There's a lot of people upset at Jimmy. There's there's a lot of emotions are high. Uh-huh. It's interesting. Um Jimmy. So uh um uh, what's his name? Mike Clum? Yeah, or? thank you. Sorry, Mike. Mike Klum, um, when he called in, he had explained that Jimmy, he had shot a whole ass documentary with Jimmy. Mike. And because he was taking too long, which I think was just only a few months, really. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy started to work with this other documentarian, Alex, documentarian, documentarian, Alex, who put out the Jimmy Lee um, documentary, which is a very good documentary that I suggest people to watch. Yep. But um, there's some drama. Alex saw that and he got upset because he felt that Mike was accusing him of plagiarizing. And now my interpretation of that interview with Mike is not that. I, I felt that Mike was being very very um kind and and flat and complimentary to you. I think if anything, he's blaming Jimmy. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, so Jimmy, first of all, okay, here's statements from all the parties. <laughs> Let's start here. Let's start with the first exhibit. <laughs> <coughs> Let's, yeah. Let's get some kind of um CSI. 
Yeah. <clears throat> so so uh, Jimmy has never put anything like this out. So if you started a dock with someone and then was ghosted after spamming them for months, would you not think that's out the door? Do you think Jimmy wrote this? It's not like in his voice. <laughs> no, I mean, no, hell no. use the word ghosted? <laughs> out the door? I feel like Jimmy wrote that. Ghosted though? No, he wouldn't say ghosted. Would he, he said it when we were on the phone with him. Hey he Mason, write something up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. He got someone to write this for him. I'm not young like you guys. I don't have time. <laughs> bro, bro. I said that jokingly, <laughs> bro, that's but I, I do think that he just thinks he's going to die soon, and he's yeah, got to get the ball going. Yeah, he's in a hurry. Alex hopped on it and completed it, whatever. <laughs> I was being goofy. Jimmy <laughs> and... definitely wrote this. Okay. This is an MD, by the way. Or, well, no, not an MD, but this is a doctor. You'll know he if he wrote it if there's, like, typos and ats in it. Because <laughs> he always, like, there's always ats and shit. Like that at sign? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like the, what is it? Uh, He's shorthand. He's a shorthand kind right. of guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex hopped on it and completed it, whatever. I was being goofy apologizing after hearing how many views the boogie doc got. Thought you guys would understand that by now. It's a comedy podcast I'm on after all. Who is this guy? <laughs> I've never heard Jimmy talk like this. Because huh. it's probably not him. But he posted it. I thought he's the only he's the one with posting power. I'm looking I'm going through my text with him right now. It doesn't seem like his general uh verbiage. I gotta ask him who wrote this, Zach. Oh. Mike is I love that he'll drop anything to call into the show pretty much. Like, when have we ever been like <laughs> hit Jimmy on the line and he didn't answer the call? And he, <laughs> guy he owns like five dentist practices. Ain't no way he would shit. he would walk away mid patient. To yeah, call into the show. Sure. You want him? You want him on the line? Yeah, let's get him on the line. I got to know what happened here. <laughs> I'm an older guy. Oh God, he's really laying it on. He says Mike is doing fine. Everybody's fine. Nobody is hurt. I'm an older guy. You guys are attacking for no reason right now. That's uncalled for. You think my documentary would have even blown up like boogies? Let's be real. <laughs> I mean, that's true. I don't know that that's true. Yeah, it's definitely true. I mean, who's Jimmy Lee? People know who Boogie is. Okay, but I think, I and mean, who knows though? I mean, it's done quite well on Alex's. Not, to, I don't want to take away from Alex. Yeah, it's done fine for yeah. for being. I mean, I, I I agree with what Jimmy's saying there. <laughs> like if Mike had made a documentary, it probably would have got a similar amount of views. Right. Good for Mike for going with Boogie. Good for me for going with Alex. All as well. You can't just take what a person say and run with it. We're humans. We're complex. We're getting used to get mad at every little thing where in the end, no one's getting hurt. That's true, Jimmy. If nobody's hurt, um, I mean, Mike did waste a lot of time. Well, he doesn't seem too cross about he it. He was the only, he's the only one who's not upset. Yeah, yeah, he's the right. only one that got fucked over. Yeah, he seemed like, <laughs> right. I guess people got mad at Jimmy when they heard about what happened. Right. Yeah. Uh, when Mike said Alex stole clips, how could that happen if nothing was released? What didn't Mike didn't specify was he meant stole the same filming location. That's all. Did he use the word stole? I don't remember stole. I don't recall him ever saying Alex stole. I don't, think, stole. Yeah, I don't think, so. I think I think Mike said that, yeah, you went into the same locations and like. Right, yeah. which I guess yeah. got interpreted as like you were ripping off, but he, I, I the way I interpret it is, it's Jimmy Lee. It, he's one person. He has one set of friends. He has one brother. He has yeah. one comedy club that he hangs out with. They he takes him to the same location. Yeah, it's gonna, them. it's gonna be a similar it's silly. thing. I mean, I, yeah, I get it. Uh, Jimmy said he'll call in in ten minutes. All right, he's finishing up on a root canal. He's he's driving. <laughs> he's probably out to dinner. He's yeah, he's at the deli dinner. for sure. Um, so this is interesting. This is a new side of Jimmy. I can't, is he defending himself? Maybe he's defending Alex. It's interesting. Alex was upset by this whole situation. Um, Alex is in chat. Alex Novell. My doc got as many views as Jimmy as actual followers on Instagram. There it is. That is true. Damn. That's true. And Jimmy, that's your official documentarian saying that, so... Hi, Alex. Welcome uh, to chat. We appreciate you. And let me check on the 
Let me check on the, the doc. Let me see what you've done here. You did a great job, too, by the way. I mean, let's put it in perspective because Mike, he's a professional and he works with people. I, it seemed like you really put that together. Um, oh, thank you. You really put that together uh, yourself, I, I'm assuming. And it's quite impressive. It brought me to tears. Olivia was crying. My God. Twice. Just about famous. The Jimmy Lee documentary. I recommend everybody watch it. I mean, damn. By the way, speaking of which, did we get a hold of the Mott's boss? Yes, we did. So we're... We're, we're going to... You and me, we're going to talk after the okay, show. Okay, good. I'm excited. I'm excited for Jimmy to not know anything about it. Okay. It happens still. I mean, this is shot like super classy. I love it. The majority of things that happen in this area are funny. So that's, so that's Alex's. This has got 50,000 views. That's great. Um... So let's continue on with the statements here. There's another post by Jimmy. Hi, everyone. Right now, it seems like I am the enemy. Again, I just... Because people are always mad at Jimmy. I, I just... Yeah. I mean, like, I find it interesting that of all the times people have been mad at him, that this is the one time he had to come out and defend himself. I've never right. seen it. I want to assure everyone that this is all a misunderstanding. Mike and I were in the works of a documentary before Alex and I were involved. After Mike. no response from Klum, for three months, after repeated attempts to reach him to no avail, I had given up. I know what that means, though, Jimmy, to be fair. You were texting him like a thousand times a day, and he was trying to live a normal life. Um... After no response from Klum for three months, after uh, repeated attempts... I had given up. Alex reached out to me by email and asked if I wanted to make a doc. So I went with Alex. Thank you. I'm very satisfied that I chose the right person to do the film for me. I am now aware that he did not say that Alex stole his content and it was a misunderstanding. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Things are heating up, man. It's an old-timey conflict, you know? All right, let me see. What did I get here? The chicken pesto? Right. Mama is continuing the documentary uh, documentarian who ended up doing Jimmy's doc left this comment about the situation. Oh, boy. Alex said, I worked super hard on my doc about Jimmy. I heard a lot to hear Mike say I basically stole the idea from him when Mike was literally making a hit piece on Jimmy. Hmm. Hmm. You know, I think it's kind of harsh, but he might be, it might be that Mike's documentary would be more critical. I think Alex took a really, like, humanistic kind of, uh, very, just a very neutral showing of Jimmy and what his life is like, you know? Yeah. And I could definitely see Mike, not that it's wrong or a bad thing, but, you know... I think Mike is, as a documentarian, more interested in, like, telling a story, mm -hmm. which isn't bad. It's good. When I met Jimmy, he told me he had filmed with Mike for four days, and all of Jimmy's team told me how worried they were that it was a hit piece documentary. His team? I gotta know who you talked to. I love Jimmy and have been a fan of HG since 2013, so it was super sad for me to hear people say my project is lesser than Mike's non-existent Jimmy Lee documentary. I put real time into my film and have true love in my heart for Jimmy. I'm super broken after this and not sure what to do next. I also interviewed Jimmy's brother, which took a lot of hard work and emotional discussions with Jimmy. There's also where I got all the archival footage from, which Mike never did. So I'll say this, Alex, your work was phenomenal. Specifically, all the archival work and then bringing his brother into it was, uh, was a, was a masterwork. Amazing. I do. I have. I do fear that you might be taking Mike's words. I don't. I don't think he accused you of stealing anything. You know. I think from your part, it's totally understandable what happened. Uh, it was definitely Jimmy. Um. That fucked Mike over, not you. Uh, no. Please let me call in. I tell you. Are you sure? You want to call on with Jimmy? I mean, that'd be interesting. Let's keep, let's keep the, let's go, let's do it. Let's let Alex call him. The documentary wars are heating up, man. 
Cardano's coming too. Let's get them all. <laughs> oh, shit. People say I chew with my mouth open. What's this? Because I'm talking? <laughs> yeah. Because I'm trying to do a show? How am I supposed to talk with my mouth closed? I'm not Jeff Dunham. <laughs> Mm -mm. I'm not gonna do it. And then I go like this to cover it, and people go, "He's soy." <laughs> Look how soy Ethan is covering his mouth. Who said that? Some people are saying that's my ick. That's the funniest shit I've ever what? heard in my life. No Reddit. fucking way. <laughs> soy because you cover your mouth as they you speak. They said that's my ick. I'm obsessed. That's a you problem. That's if that that's is your so ick. funny. That's on you. Now. You know. That's an ick to call it an ick. Exactly. Yep. That's a reverse ick. So, well, since Alex is calling in, then we'll just wait and talk to him. Mike responded, though. So now, Mike has made a statement. Everybody's forced to make a statement on this. Uh -huh. Hey, guys, just to clarify, I don't think Alex plagiarized my film. In any way, he did a great job and brought additional scenes and ideas that I had. It. Given a range of commitments I have, my process takes between six... Uh, to 12 months, I understand this wasn't the timeline that was fit for Jimmy. He was anxious to keep things moving, and I mentioned I needed more time. Alex didn't see my footage, but we did both shoot in a lot of similar locations and discuss similar things. This is why I said replica, but that was the wrong word to use and insinuated malice intent, which there was none by Alex. I do think Jimmy should have been more forward with me about his involvement in another documentary, and I would have happily collaborated but this is ultimately okay, and this is how things happen in business. The H3 interview was my first major public interview. I was a bit nervous and excited. and should have been more respectful to Alex and his team for the original work they did. I encourage everyone to check it out. I think he's, I think, again, Mike, to, Mike is being very gracious. I don't, I think Mike, I, I, I don't, I mean, I think you both are totally fine. Both of you guys, you know. Just as Jimmy did this. This is an old timey thing happening here. This is not your guys' fault. Jimmy caused this whole thing too. We weren't going to talk about um, Mike working on his Jimmy doc until Jimmy messaged us. <coughs> so he, he shoehorned himself into the drama here. Mm. True. Um, in Dub We Trust said, What is this about the eel pit? Is this an eel pit? Are you eel pit associated? Well, I have a second. Let me speak for the audience. Oh, never mind. I misread that. We see you putting off the eel pit. No, the eel pit's going to... We're doing that next. Right after this. Right after this. Mm -hmm. um, so, is there more... There's more posts. And Jim, like, Jimmy put this on a chalkboard graphic. What the fuck? <laughs> this one is Jimmy for sure. Because <laughs> look at the spacing, the enters. But where do you get this template? <laughs> Dude must have downloaded, like, an app. A good Shock note marker. app, and he's just like, I don't fucking know. It's written in prose. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So this one may have been Jimmy. He said, hi, everyone. Right now, it seems like I am the enemy. Oh, didn't I read this one? Yeah, I read this one. Yeah, a different version of it, I guess. I like this version better. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I have um, Card Cardamon. 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 Cardamo? In the lobby, and I also have Alex, the uh, documentary filmmaker. Let, let's lobby. stay focused, Cardamo. Sorry, I, let's follow. Let's continue the thread, and let's talk <laughs> to Alex. Have him as a third wheel in this conversation. Let's let's try to keep it. Uh, so bring Alex in. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, choking. <clears throat> I mean, I'm I'm fascinated by all this. It's pretty incredible. All right. Um, he's here. He doesn't seem to be paying attention. I don't know if he knows that he's in here. Alex? He hasn't connected his audio. Oh, there we go. Alex. Uh, One sec. Let me mute the... Oh, uh, good. Okay, cool. There we go. I had to mute the show. Hello. Hello. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. Are you uh, great to? Sorry to cut you. I was just saying. I hope you're feeling better about the situation because I'm I'm feeling really good. 
from the get-go when I called Mike, I don't know if you watched the video that I put out, but when I called Mike, he was very understanding about the whole situation. And I was just like, look, like I feel like there's like some misconceptions because I just started getting like bombarded like all of a sudden i've never seen something because i'm like a really small guy i've never seen something like this where like i was getting all this love on the dock and everyone was really into it and then like you guys had that episode with mike and then like all this hate started flowing in really? and all these comments on the dock of people being like i'll read one to you right now yeah go ahead comments. i'm curious what people were saying that might explain uh, why the Mods Boss segment is so out of place. Gotta gotta rep the Mods Boss, by the way. Dude, I love Mods Boss. We're we're working on getting him. No, I, I've been talking to him. I've been I've been coaching him. For we're sure. booking he, him. We we shot. I shot something with him on Saturday, and I just put it up on my channel this morning. Um, it's Ooh. like an extra Star Wars, like heavy Star Wars <laughs> mozzarella boss Hell bringing yeah. old mozzarella back. That's to an life exclusive. With the power of the Force. Hell yeah, 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 yeah. So, anyways, so. Someone said, like, uh, they said, maybe the doc was about Jimmy and his friends, but I think the other guy should have done the doc. Boogie's was way better quality than this. And I think, like, the thing is, is there was never, a like, net, a yeah, comparison of yeah. the two docs. And because of that episode, there's just all this comparison between, well, Mike could have done Jimmy's story. And I just put out a video to say, like, look, if Mike had done it, it might have been different. I have no ill will towards Mike. I just felt like I had to defend my doc. I had to defend Jimmy because Jimmy, Jimmy did, he's not being very clear about this, but like uh, Olivia, the girl who works with Jimmy, she reached out uh, to you what? guys, I think, and sent you an email. So um, Olivia works for Jimmy. Different and, person, not me. And what did she, what did she email us? She, I think she guys, she sent you guys an email uh, with like, text screenshots of her calling Mike Klum and telling him basically that Jimmy didn't, he was worried about the doc. I, I, I'm not really sure. Cause I just, I, she was texting me about all of this and I think it's more like her, her side of the story than mine. But I just wanted to say my piece of that. Like Mike understood that I, that like as a filmmaker, I had to say like, look, replica is a really weird word in filmmaking. He, I felt, because it was very hard to like get all of that that like i don't know i just felt like i had to come out and defend my work <laughs> i understand but alex one sec can we get olivia on the call yeah <laughs> we're gonna get and jimmy's gonna be joining us soon so we'll get to the oh maybe... my god this is a. can we get the mozzarella boss on too that's on you i, I mean, do we have his frankly, number yeah. yes i, I do yeah, i have his, I have I have his number <laughs> i've been texting with him yeah let's get the mods boss, get the mods boss, boss in here fuck it I just, we gotta get the whole can we get joey gabba gooch do you guys have joey gabba gooch's number <laughs> i <laughs> don't <laughs> i can give you gabba <laughs> gooch's number Olivia. Gooch. Um, who is gabba the gooch oh that's gooch the guy at the diner gabba the gooch is jimmy's sidekick he's a very important character in all of this literally he just kind of he's quiet he'll just kind of sit there in the corner and be quiet He's but for ambiance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gabba Gucci is very so, important. Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I see how, why that comment would be upsetting. Although, I think, you know, I think and also what, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but he, he implied that that they were that Jimmy was taking me around and showing me like places and stuff. My whole family's from Cherry Hill, uh, so I, I kind of like we would set intentions for the day of like what the story would be. But it, this was all kind of like, I'm a longtime fan of the show, and this is like my love letter to Jimmy and to the show. So Thank you. It, it, it's not, it, it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't like how it was implied that like Jimmy was taking me to the diner. Jimmy was taking me. The only place Jimmy took me is whenever we shot the street comedy, we had to like kind of stay and follow him. And right. I had to coach my camera people to be like, this is we got. This is the reward he gets for the day. We we did a lot of hard work today, and this is what he wants to do. So, how many people did you work with on this uh, on this documentary? So I like financed this all out of pocket um, with like five grand, um, wow. and it was just me, my best friend Josh from college, my friend Yuki, who's a really talented cinematographer and filmmaker. Um, so it was like maybe 10 people total who worked on the the movie but oh wow i uh uh i just like called in every favor and like every person i i know from like working professionally doing like stuff in my day job and then like stuff outside of that just trying to like 
I feel like I just had this story to tell about Jimmy. Like, I I'm thought, so connected to I, him. It's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> you guys talk every day, I'm assuming. Like, well, constantly. That's what Jimmy and I are kind of like on the rocks right now, actually. He, we haven't talked in like four days, <laughs> oh, and it's no. really sad to me. I'm hoping <laughs> when he calls in, we can make nice because, like, he, he said I wasn't defending him enough in the comments, and he thought I deleted one of his <laughs> comments. I'm like, fuck? he just got so upset. Wait, at me Jimmy and I got cried mad over at you? I ate a Costco rotisserie chicken and I cried and sobbed. I'm like, Jimmy no. hates me. Jimmy hates me. You... Why does it work? And Larry called me. Larry called me on the phone and he's like, I'm sorry about what's happening to you, man. I'm like, Wait, and I Larry's said, Larry... Jimmy's brother, right? Yeah, Larry's so Jimmy's brother. So he's even involved in this? This is, well, this, this, right. this drama is far reaching. This what? is like a it's total national. fallout. This is international. Could we have everybody him call was in? affected? Uh, that's fucked up. No, no, Jimmy, Jimmy was. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's too far. That's too far. I won't do that to him. Uh, I'm talking too much. I'm sorry, guys. No, I'm no. a little hopped up. I think I, I Olivia uh, messaged me on Discord. I don't. I, I don't know if this is her. I or not. Instagram DM'd her. Okay. The, with the Zoom link, so Olivia, so if you're got, watching. So he got mad at you because you weren't defending him. It's he, that's um, this is a mischaracterization. Jimmy is an amazing person. He has extreme OCD. What I found from working on this film, he adjusts the corners of things and he flips the lights on and off and does stuff his mom would do, which is like incredible, like classical OCD. But he also, in conjunction with that, has what we call old fashioned New Jersey lead poisoning. Ah, um, uh, uh, so maybe he's not histrionic, maybe it's just lead poisoning over a no, lifetime. But like, of Tap the water. people from that town, like the people from Cherry Hill, like my grandparents, are like leaded the fuck oh, up. Oh, interesting. They're just filled with lead. Oh, that is so insightful. So tell me about the timeline, though. Because so all this, there was kind of a fallout. You got upset after the mic one. It sounds like you guys resolved it, and I'm happy about that. Because I think you're both good dudes, so I, I, I hate to see Mike's you all Mike's a fighting. great guy. Mike yeah. is a re and his movie did so well, and like you, his movie did amazing, and it's incredibly way more polished than mine. He did put twenty thousand dollars into his film, and I put five thousand into mine. And, but I do want to emphasize how amazing what you accomplished was, specifically getting his brother, and all the um, nostalgia shots. I mean, that was that was really professional. The way that that all came together. Um. I appreciate I, that. Thank actually, you. Actually, I never asked Jimmy what was his response to seeing his brother in the documentary because that was kind of he a big deal. He knew Larry was going to be in it. He we, we he knew like it, it took a lot of convincing to like tell the story of the brothers and all of that <laughs> and like I kind of tiptoed around like the the main issue of why why and how and Do I won't you, get into all of that. You know what happened though? Yeah. But you can't obviously you wouldn't say no, it's not no. your place. It's yeah. it, it's like it's like the wife and kids. It's like you just you don't go there. It's yeah, not... yeah, 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 yeah. Damn, that's but sad again, though. It seems like his bro is like really guy. wants to um reconcile. That's the I guess the sad part. But he must have really Big fucked time. Jimmy. <laughs> um, uh, you no comment. You don't have to comment. Yeah, you don't uh, have to comment. That's all say. Yeah, no comment. So um. So Jimmy's mad, but I don't understand why Jimmy would be mad at you. You didn't, you didn't do anything, say anything about him. He was just upset, like at the whole situation. And I think he's never. This is what Mace, Mason called me, and he's like, "Listen, Alex, Jimmy is FOMO the fuck up. He got five hundred hate comments. He's just <laughs> on FOMO overload. Like you have to, you have to let him chill." And I'm like, "No, like I was trying to, I was trying to produce something else with Jimmy. We're we're trying to work on this other project, and like." I was trying to get like a sponsor involved. Oh, look, Olivia's here. Hi, Olivia. All right, we've got another uh, member in the call. Jimmy's calling as well, uh, again, joining as well. Hold it. So, Olivia, I can't Hold see. It. I can't see Olivia. Oh my I can't see anyone but Alex at the moment. Oh, it's a jump scare when Jimmy comes. Oh God! In. Look at him. Jesus fucking Christ. We need Mason in here. That's oh. I need. We do need. We need Mason. We do need. He texted me. So get he, Mason he in here. Live. I need the whole Jimmy. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can see and I can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Hello, Hello. <laughs> Olivia. Can I just can I just text him that link? Yeah, just send it to Mason. So Olivia, what do, what do you do for uh, Jimbo? 
Um, I encourage Jimmy to be the best version of himself that he can be when I get to see him in the city. Hi, I... Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy is... Uh... He is serious today. <laughs> Jimmy, are you non-verbal today? What's going on? You seem kind of harsh. You're not talking. Hi, Jimmy, I straightened my hair. <laughs> and Olivia, uh, Olivia, are you are you a paid employee or what is your association? No, no, no. no. Yeah. It's pure so, love of the game. Um. Yes. Well, actually, it started out where I have the like, name page myself, and like I would just DM Jimmy like, "Hey, you should delete this because like uh, <laughs> I want fun," and so. I'd be like, hey, this, yeah, this one's definitely racist. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, hey, some people like, need that soundboard, you know. Uh, don't do the camel joke. You, someone needs to tell you that. <laughs> some people need the extra love. And Sorry about my bird in the back. Sorry? I have a pet parrot. So oh, no, I can't even hear. You're good. You're good. You're good. So, um... But they, you're referred to as someone on Jimmy's team. Would you consider yourself to be on his team? Yes, always on Jimmy's side. Always have his back. <laughs> Jimmy, <laughs> you really have these these people. They really care about you. Uh -huh. I see Alex talk about you. He really, he really does seem to have a soft spot <laughs> for you. A lot of these people, they are endeared to you, Jimmy. Jimmy, uh -huh. Jimmy, what? Come on. Oh, uh, yeah. Mason's joined. Mason, it's so nice to see you. Um, Very nice to finally talk with you guys. Mason, hey, nice to connect. I don't think we've ever connected like this. I don't oh, think so. Awesome. I know. This is I just know. so great. This so is exactly this is what I wanted. This is huge, dude. This is huge. <laughs> Who else, can, we get, can we get Gooch in here? Can we get mozzarella balls? We're working on it. Yeah, we're working on he it. He said he's trying. <laughs> Mason, um... Goose. Peebler was there the day that he filmed with Mike, so if you could send a link to Peebler. Oh, Pe Peebler. We gotta get Peebler, we gotta get Peebler <laughs> here, too. We gotta sure, get yeah. Peebler. Send the link to anyone Peebs you guys think. Must. No, no, yeah. I'll, let's, can I just put <laughs> the link? Yeah, let's just put the just link just out. Post, yeah, 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 yeah. Discord, Go yeah. Whoever you want. No, no, I'll send it. I'm just kidding. So, I'll Mason, you have, the, you have the exclusive distinction of being the only paid uh, 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 employee of Jimmy's. How does that feel? Uh, it feels good. It feels good. I love doing it. I love making the memes and shit. So it's just so much fun overall. You're really good at it. You've got a wild mind, dude. Dude, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I try to just be crazy just whenever I can. Just fucking go crazy with it. Although I do want to ask, are you the one that made the meme about um, Osama bin Laden parachuting from the World Trade Center and saying old timey? <laughs> Probably. I wouldn't be surprised. No, I don't know. Who makes those ones? <laughs> I knew that, yeah. yeah. It was probably me then. Yeah, it was probably um, me. I make a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and are, is this your full time gig, uh, Mason? Right now, yeah. I was a manager at like restaurants and stuff. Hell and then yeah. I used to do like stream, but now I just do this videos. We do his videos too. And yeah. that's, that's honestly <laughs> so cool, Jimmy, that, uh, that uh, Mason has found himself a really cool job doing something that he loves. For example, I mean, this meme really changed. Everything changed after this day. The devil gets chills when the nice guy loses his temper. My Roman Empire. <laughs> oh my! That was a big one. This was is your Roman Empire, AB, because you think about it yeah. every week, all the time. <laughs> yeah. So, Jimmy, you haven't said anything. What's going on? I'm letting everybody have their platform, being being considerate. <laughs> Jimmy, That's are you gonna call me back? Jimmy, how? Why is it that you've been? <laughs> Jamie, why is it that you've avoided uh, talking to Alex for the last four days? <laughs> Jimmy, you're being very... Your histrionic uh, personality oh, disorder has evaporated. <laughs> 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 Any comment uh, about the Alex situation, Jimmy? Uh -oh. Did the lead poisoning thing, did you hear about that? That he says you may have lead poisoning? Uh -oh. No. Mad Hatter's disease. Mad Hatter's disease, uh, some call it. Jimmy, do you think it's possible that you consumed a lot of lead over your lifetime? No, sir. No. In the pipes in New Jersey, Jimmy, come on. Maybe James Weiner has. James, oh, oh, oh it's Gabe. Gabe is here! Hey, Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> 
Gabe, nice to see you, man. How are you? It's nice to see you not on a Friday. On a Monday, in fact, like the, the opposite. <coughs> Jimmy. Oh, it's Mott's boss. Let's go. The Mott's boss is in the house. Oh, my God. My boy. Yes. That internet is not oh, looking too good there. over there, but. Hmm. Oh, we're here. The lighting. Oh. Mott's boss. <laughs> <laughs> the one and only. You're a star, yeah. man. You're the breakout character. I mean, my God, everybody's asking, who is the Mott's boss and how do we get more? Well, let me put on my mozzarella boss hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we finally, you know, I got to get in full gear. Jimmy's mad. Uh, okay. Jimmy, uh, well, Jimmy, any comment uh, on uh, the proceedings? A big gulp. Wow. <laughs> That's a huge gulp. What anyway, are you drinking, Jimmy? Anyway. I'm a, a long-time listener. <laughs> what are you drinking, Jimmy? Water. Jimmy Lee, I have a No, that wasn't you. water. Bring it Fish. back. Fuck. That's water, Ethan. I have a beef with you, motherfucker. <laughs> you? <laughs> okay. okay, Gabe. I have a beef with you, Jimmy Lee. Wait, right. Gabe has a beef with Jimmy? What happened? I don't even know anything. What? What did Jimmy right. do to you, Gabe? <laughs> what the right. fuck? You... Uh, you you ran Jersey, baby. Fuck, you ran Jersey, not me. I ran Jersey. Oh. I'm the king of Jersey, especially Matt Pelosian. Matt Pelosian in Jersey. I, I ran right. Jersey. I'm, I'm the I'm the I've been behind. Mott's boss back. says he I runs his Pelosian. Jersey. Uh, I ran babe. Jersey. I run Jersey. Does anybody else want to claim I, 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 that they run Jersey? I, I run Jersey. I, 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 I Alex runs Jersey. Fire. It never, it never won the jersey out. James, well. you having uh, some conflict of uh, turf? Are you claiming New Jersey as yours, or are you con are you conceding to uh, hey, these two? Me? Yeah, you. Me. I'm the Jersey Outlaw. They all know I run New Jersey. That's I'm it. The platform. They know that. They don't even know I'm at the Jersey Shore. Ah, uh, they they, even... they know Motspot says the Jersey Shore. Yeah, they I'm do the know the Jersey, boss. bitch. Yeah, Mantelokian. I ran Mantelokian, baby. Mantelokian. All right. Man left, baby. And Man Olivia, Lincoln. Olivia, do you live in New Jersey? Are you local? Uh... No, I'm from New York. Oh, you're from um, New York. You're a city slicker. City slicker. Yeah. Nice. We love that. And Mason, where are you? Where are, I'm not, you don't have to <laughs> dox yourself. I'm just curious if you're local with all these folks. No, I'm in Northern California. Uh, like Sacramento. Oh, I see. I see. And and Alex, you do you live on the East Coast near Jimmy, or what? Did you trans? Did you drive out there or trans? Uh, travel out there? Bushwick. Say what? Brooklyn, Bushwick. Oh, another city slicker, huh? Uh, Big city folk. They're all city slickers. So Jimmy, but we're I mean, from the sticks. J Jimmy, we've got quite an ensemble of people that really admire and care about you. Um, this is quite inspiring. Thank You're... you. I appreciate that. Now, do you want to talk about... We're here to say... Mott's boss, are you... Um, are you thinking of uh, selling the mozzarella? Are we bottling it? Are we going international or national? We're, we're just... I've been just doing it for fun. Having a good time. Not really... You know, just just enjoying myself doing it. You know, Jimmy was famous, and you know what? I'm going to make myself famous. Since since as we know, behind the uh, one f up Dennis, going back seven years ago, you were involved in that, right, Jim? I was I was the one that actually said, Jim, just be yourself. You're funny when you're one fucked up, Dennis. Oh, because I've been friends with Jim for. What, I ran years, high. I ran Atlantic City, motherfucker. <laughs> what is going on? Gabe says he, he runs it. Atlantic Jim. City. That's true. Jim, is that the guy we know from the casino, the paper wrapped chicken? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> These two are I'm really the I'm the the casino where we used to go get the free <laughs> Hold on. Hold New on. Jersey, fuck. That was a little. That was a little mean, don't you think, Mott's boss? No, no, I don't. I didn't mean him. I, Jim and I used to go. Jim used to take me to dinner, 
at the casino with his uncle, and the guy would make his oh. paper wrapped chicken. Oh, you call. literally okay? You're you're thinking of an actual literal person. It wasn't like a racial joke. No, no, not okay, at all. Okay. Not at all. <laughs> okay. You're good. racist. Not at all. I rap. I turn seaside, motherfucker. Fuck. <laughs> That's my boy, Gabe. You're doing. I love it. Hey, Claw, Gabe. We love you. Yeah, so, we do. so Jimmy, um, what's going on with Alex? I, I hate to see that there's some kind of rift formed between the two of you. He did a good movie on me, and uh, I thanked him for that. That's it, pretty Jimmy? much. Alex, that's not exactly true, is it? Um, Jim, uh, we've been we've been talking, we've been we've been working on something, and and uh, you just kind of ghosted me a little bit. And also, like, you were, I thought I just thought we were friends. We said, you said we were going to go to Ponzio's together. Jimmy, go ahead. I don't have anything really to say, Eith, to be honest with you. I'm so really sad. He had a very good me. movie on me, and I thanked him for that, and I was appreciative of the movie. He mm. did a great job. I'm yeah, sad. Mott's boss. Your mozzarella isn't it. Oh. You're breaking my heart, Jimmy. You're really breaking my heart. I think that that comment really got to Gabe, and I understand why, Gabe. Your 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 anger hey, is justified. We love you. We love you, Gabe. You're you're part of New Jersey, buddy. Olivia, did you want to say something? You were putting your hand up. Um, I just feel like you know, Jimmy. He's a complex guy, a funny guy. So sometimes you know things go up and down, but he's the star, and you know you've got to make it work and. <laughs> Alex made it work with Jimmy, and Jimmy got his movie. Um, yeah, I wasn't really gonna insert much there, so you can follow the well, course of the conversation. Well, I'll say, yeah, that Olivia fuck ghosted you. Yeah, that fuck ghosted you. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, he did. Um, Olivia, I want to say you really are a, are really good at your job. I mean, you're doing PR, you're managing Jimmy, and it seems like I can't say it seems like a thank. It might sound like a thankless job at times, and I think, I think you're doing a really good job. So I congratulate you on that. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Jimmy may not agree, but thank you. Um, Mason, Olivia, and Alex, are you guys in a group chat at all? Do you guys communicate about that? No, no. Okay. We kind of all talk through me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Jimmy, there is definitely some tension between you and Alex that I just don't understand. Yeah. Alex, you're really funny. <laughs> he says, he's, Whoa. he's a funny guy. What, is he, what does he mean by funny that, Alex? Guy. You are I, a really funny guy. Jimmy, <laughs> what is going on, dude? Why are you he, so upset? You haven't talked to me since Friday when all this kind of, when the shit hit the fan. I tell I I told you I love you, man. I love you so much. Like that's why I told your story. That's why we did this thing. Mm -hmm. And like, I I just don't understand why you're treating me <laughs> like I like I wronged you in some way, and why you cut me off. I was we we talk like maybe mm. nine to ten times a day sometimes, and suddenly zero phone calls, not a text. And then he texts me, hits me with the K, like that's nothing, or he leaves me on red. Jimmy, do you think it's possible that whatever perceived slight may have happened uh, that's uh, pushed you away from Alex, I do genuinely think that Alex doesn't know what he did wrong. And I think it, it'd be a good maybe time to communicate so that we could mend some bridges here. I There's nothing really to say, to be honest. I told you he made a movie on me. He did a really nice job making a movie. He really did. The documentary is really well done. Jimmy, do you think Alex was deleting comments like in No, your... you, you know what? You know what? Here's the here's what it is. Here's what it is. Ooh, here we go. Here's what it is. Here's what it is, guys. Yeah. Here we the, go. A couple days before the movie came out, I sent Jimmy a copy of the movie and he called me and he said you need to redo the entire thing. It's very boring. Oh. I don't like the mozzarella boss. The mozzarella boss has to oh. be removed completely. Oh. And <laughs> 
And he just like, yeah, and, and to be honest, you guys, to be honest, I screamed at him. I full on screamed at him on the phone. I like, I've never let loose on somebody like that. And I apologize to him for it. I was very apologetic, but it, it, there was a huge lead up to this of him calling me a schnorrer because he said I didn't pay for the meal for his crew. Oh. He wanted me to take everybody out yeah. to Balthazar. And it turned into this whole thing. And now we're like at odds with each other off this weird shit. And it's like, come on, Jimmy, let's, let's work it out. I understand. I, I'm not a schnorrer. I put out five grand for the movie. And and also like the movie, everyone loved the movie. It was good. It, it didn't get a ton of views. It didn't make you famous, but like, it was a good movie. People liked it. And like, now you like want to treat me like I'm the devil. Cause I didn't turn you into Sylvester Stallone. Jimmy, was his recounting of that accurate? Whoa, the second angle is really, sorry. Whoa. I was just like, that's, Not that's angry. cinematography. Mots boss. How do you feel knowing that Jimmy was lobbying to remove your uh, section? I, well, I always know. Don't forget, I, me and J Jim and I go back since 1985. That was when so I was born. I know, I know Jim, and he knows me. And you know, he, you know, he was bound to become famous. And the movie did finally come out. And then I had to put my two cents into it and say, you know what? I got let's let's face reality. Um, I got no, never once does he ever mention about me and my involvement with one, one effed up Dennis, how I came up with the idea, ABC always be cleaning, and all the stuff that went along. So he had seven years of fame, and <clears throat> you know, it was always wiener, wiener time with the W. Well, now it's the flip, let's flip the switch. Maybe it's gonna be mozzarella time, you know, with the M. <laughs> I'm sensing, I'm sensing, um, this is really interesting because I'm sensing there's a little resentment, uh, mozzarella boss, not just for the, his suggestion of cutting you from the film, but it, I'm sensing you feel you've not been credited enough in his rise to fame. Correct. 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 Can I, can I like, say one thing? Absolutely. We'd love to hear from you. The only thing he said true was the the uh, the always clean teeth. He did he did do that part in the one after up Dennis, and the one after up Dennis was my videographer John Bell's idea. It wasn't Rob's idea, and Rob was put into the movie because he was a friend. And the only thing he said true was always be cleaning teeth. That was his skit from the movie I used. Mott's boss, no. do you have a response to that? My response is Jim. I said you're funny when you're yourself. I said, you're one fucked up dentist. And that's what the video should be. I said, and you should go with that theme, not the outlaw. You're not the outlaw. You're the dentist. That's interesting. We've been trying to give him the same advice, Mots boss. Uh, Jimmy, did he come up with that name? He's funny, but he's himself. No, he didn't come up with that idea. It was John Bell that came up with the idea. Rob Never did heard. say that I should be the one after dentist, but the problem is it hurt my business career, so I do street comedy, but he didn't come up with the idea, and he didn't do everything to make me famous. I've done everything myself, and Rob was in one of the episodes. That's the truth. Well, Jimmy, you know, some people say uh, there's, a, uh, there's a line in a drink song that I can't recall, but it's something about when you rise up, you gotta bring your people with you. Maybe Mott's boss feels left behind a little bit in your rise to I, fame. I, I, I do feel a little left behind, Ethan. Right. You know? Well, that's just him I, being... I do. I mean, here, me and him, we go back since 1985. I was washing his uncle's boat. Uh, you know, we we had many, many good times. And, uh, you know, when he got to the top, I got kicked to the curb. Wow. That's, that's, that's you know, also a total... Like... That's also, Rob, such a total lie. <laughs> um, oh. You're really a liar. You're really, oh. and you think it's a joke. Okay. It's really not a joke, and you well, really hurt. Well, trying to act like you're the reason no, I got honest. famous. Jim. I've been breaking my fucking balls at this shit for 25 years. You were in one of my freaking you videos. Have. You are not the reason I am where I'm at. Don't even play because it's Jimmy. not nice. No, Jim. Jimmy. Jim has no, Rob, Rob, very, Rob, very Rob. Don't insult me on H3, who I who I love and I pride myself on. And lie to them on the air 
and say you made me famous because it's not a joke because you did I, not. You have done nothing for me. You were on one of my episodes, and that was it. So okay. don't bullshit them. It's not right. It's wrong. Don't Jimmy lie. Jimmy made himself famous. Jim, Jimmy definitely made Jim himself famous. Jim did make himself famous. Yeah, well, it's wrong to lie to Ethan. Well, hold on, Jimmy. Uh, it's, it's wrong to lie to people, Rob, and do that because you're lying. It's not right. Jimmy, if Jim I can interject, uh, if I can interject a bit, I don't think, Jimmy, he was accusing you of, of, I don't think he was saying he's solely responsible for, for your success. I think he just, I think he feels a little left behind. And I think he's being raw and he's being emotional and he's being real for you right now. Just to say like, as a longtime friend since 1985, he, he wants to be more included in, in all the amazing things you have going on. He has invited me though. Jim has, for the record, he's invited me to New York. He's invited me to L.A. He even I invited me to the invited him to everything. And he just with literally you doesn't come to anything. But he came Correct. to came to the thing when Alex filmed because he wanted to be included. Ah. And he the things that can get him noticed. But when I invite him to go to New York to Little Italy and do a lot of other things, he doesn't do them. Okay, so honest. so a that's new being this is a new dialogue emerging here, Mots Boss, that suggests that uh, perhaps you could be more supportive, but perhaps you're just uh, uh, pursuing the clout. I I have to interject okay. here before Rob responds. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Jimmy is saying that he ends in, he invites Rob to Little Italy and stuff like that. He invites Gooch and people to do stuff like that too, but it's it's hard because it's like a full twelve hour day sometimes where you're with Jimmy, you're doing FOMO, you're on the street, you're running around, and like Jimmy has this insane energy. I mean, there was this week where everybody in New York was sick except for Jimmy. He's like <laughs> RoboCop or something. I don't understand it. So I think like not everyone has the energy to keep up with Jimmy and do something like that. And and so like a lot of times people say like, oh, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go do the FOMO. Sorry, Jimbo. Um, is that a, is that a good, uh, accurate kind of uh, response, Mott's boss? I, I would agree. Jim, Jim has invited me many, many times for the record. Yeah. He's invited me to New York. He invited me to meet you guys when you guys first met and did your thing. Um, you know, I, I just have different uh, things that I need to attend to. Right. I mean, you're so, Rob, but Rob, he has the I, daycare cleaning business. It's really Rob, important. Can I you talk about the daycare? Uh, hold on, guys. Go ahead, Jimmy. Yes. Rob, did I invite you when I met Ethan 10 years ago to come? Yes, you did. It was about seven years ago, Jim, but yes, you did. Okay. That's also okay. a lot. But go ahead. Wait, you what? never invited me? No. You did? <laughs> No. Jimmy didn't okay. invite me anything. <laughs> Gabe says he wasn't invited. Look, <laughs> Gabe, I don't know that. My, Gabe, you, you are invited funny. my friend, but you didn't invite me. That's interesting. Jimmy, your thoughts? About Gabe? He says he wasn't invited. Well, I don't know Gabe very well. I met Gabe at your live show in June one time. <laughs> I like Gabe. He's nice. No. But I only met him once. Mott's boss, uh, th at this point in time, does anyone want to interject anything? I want to continue the conversation, but Mason, Olivia, do any of you guys want to add anything? I just want to give a pause and allow everyone to talk. Uh, I, okay. I'm, I've got COVID and I'm super high, so I'm trying to okay, stay cool. along. <laughs> so that's pretty interesting. That'd be an interesting experience for you. I yeah. just want to feel good, so positive. Nice. Nah. <laughs> Good vibes, Mason. We love the memes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Olivia? I don't, have, I don't have much to say, but I sent you guys, like, an email when, like, the whole debacle was going down. Um, but, Can you, yeah. Do you guys have an email to pull up? So, so Mott's boss, um, Jimmy's, I think, called, uh, made some kind of accusation of you being a clout goblin. Do you know what that is? Following him, he now said, that he's famous, he says he, trying to get lip off of his tail, yeah, coattails. <laughs> yeah, the coattails. The coattails of Jimmy Lee. Hit it on the nail, Ethan. And so, do you do you accept, uh, Mott's boss, that you may be riding his coattails? I I cannot accept that. No. And why is that? Other, other than speaking with you, I that I will give him credit. He, me talking to you and the team right now is because of Jim and because of Alex. 
Right. This is all because of Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy is everything. Jimmy's the cause of all this, and <laughs> this is. I'm, I feel I'm, like I'm a little upset because I feel like in this room there's a lot of love, and Jimmy, I just I sense that you have a lot of resentment for some of the people in this chat, and I just feel like it's a shame because I don't feel like it has to be this way, Jim. So, Ethan, I'm a very intelligent, smart person, and sometimes I see things. Mason's aware of this, we talk a lot, and I don't say things, but it doesn't mean I don't know things about people and the things that they do. Okay. So, the reason I am, I'm very protective, I told this to Zach tonight, of you guys. I can list numerous episodes when things have possibly threatened you at your live show in June with somebody, I'm not mentioning a name, and uh, other times, and I totally talked to Zach, and he'll 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 nod his head on this, and Zach. called him, told him, told him the <laughs> truth, and and he, and and he tells me what to do, and I tell him the truth, and I never once wrong you, Zach. Am I right or wrong? Zach will Zach knows that. Oh, I don't need Zach to tell me that though. We know that. But Zach, are you okay, not, so, are you not commenting, Zach? I, well, I mean, I, I'm very upfront with Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm a, yeah. I'm a Loyal, loyal Absolutely. guy. Absolutely. And that's not loyal. questioned at all. That's not questioned at all. No. Loyal, loyal to the end, just like you're, I am with my wife. Your, your loyalty with, is not in question, Jimmy, I promise. Right. So, so, and my, my integrity and honesty, despite my character and my offensive jokes. So when I find out how people are, unfortunately, I do sometimes, I get very hurt because deep down I'm a very sensitive person. Mm. And then I kind of shy away from people when they hurt me and do things that aren't very nice. Kind of like why I don't bother with my brother. You see? Yeah. Because I, I, Ethan, I'm a lot like you and Howie. You guys are the probably the most generous, nicest guys that I've met. Just Thank to be kind of nice to me. And I'm not just saying it to to, to kiss your ass because I'm on the show. I'm saying that as the truth. And I like to surround myself with people that are generally really nice and in it for the right reasons um, that really love me for me, not for ulterior motives and if they can get something from me. Does that explain it without having to go into detail? Jimmy, I love you for you. I love you for you so much. I just want to hang out with you and not do FOMO or anything. <laughs> like Hang out you and me, just like, you know. Get, get do I thing. have ulterior motives? What's my motive, Jim? Well, you're uh, Ethan. Ethan hit it. What do you call it, Ethan? A clout something? A I don't clout know. goblin, clout. I believe it was. Yeah, the yeah. Ethan, clout Ethan goblin. hit that one right on the head. Rob, That's a mischaracter. I like you. I've known you many years, but I do know what you're in it for, and what you're a little deceptive with me. And you, uh, <laughs> you know, you're just, you're just, you're just who you are. I'm not angry with you in any way. But you're not forthright and honest, and and it makes me hurt. You hurt me, and then I kind of shy away. If Ethan's wanting to know the truth, uh, uh, let, can I interject here? Because I feel yeah. like Jimmy is actually being quite vulnerable with us. I think being able to admit that when someone hurts you, that how you shy away, I think is a quite a quite mature and vulnerable thing to to um, my admit to. My brother, my entire life, <clears throat> Ethan, has done very mean things to me and this is why i don't have a relationship so when people do things to me to hurt me a deep down i would do anything for anybody and give them the shirt off my back i would give you my last dollar but if you hurt me or you lie or you're deceptive with me or you have motives and the love isn't really there because i'm an older person now i won't engage and i will shy away but so and, do, do you and, and being and being so open and honest with us and vulnerable Mm -hmm. Do you think it's possible that sometimes as a defense mechanism, you shy away when you perceive that you've been slighted? But I think that being able to recognize that is only half the battle. I think the other battle, Jimmy, is being able to confront that feeling and uh, talk with the other person about it. Because I think you'll find most times, Jimmy, that the 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 harm that you perceive on a personal level was never intended and i will i will admit on the air 
because I'm far from perfect, and everybody on the H3 crew knows that. Yeah. I am a non-confrontational person. I'm very bad with that. I'm like that with my employees, and uh, I, I shy away because I don't like confrontation and conflict, uh, and, and that's, that's my problem that I have to work with. So, I, Ethan, that's a very valid point, and okay. you're right. You're right on that. I will give you that one. Because I, I I hate to see, like, let's just start, for example, with Alex. I mean, Alex mm -hmm. is really, he put a lot on the line to make this documentary for you. He spent a lot of money. And um, I just, you know, I, I don't see why you guys can't just connect. Let's say this, Jimmy. He slighted you. And you're feeling, again, let's recognize what it is, a defense mechanism. And we all have them. And so you see yourself... Um, because you don't want to get hurt, and, and you don't want to even go there because it hurts so bad to be betrayed by someone you love as a friend. But I think that I think that if you guys can make a connection, and that that's how you heal, Jimmy. You know what I mean? Because if you if you just withdraw, you you leave in pain. You leave with an open wound, and we need to allow these wounds to heal. Okay. You said, Jimmy, you told me that you loved me. You said that we were like brothers. And oh, oh hi. <laughs> Spitty, Spitty. So I really yeah, been... bonded. I really bonded, Alex, with you a lot till I got wronged by you a few okay, times. Okay, That's this... why I backed off. You know, <laughs> Jimmy. Like my brother. You're a lot like my brother. <clears throat> Jimmy, can yeah, you... you're treating me like your actual brother, dude. I, I love you and I care about you. I want the best for you. I want to bring you to the level that you actually that I promised you when I made this movie. I said, I want to give you that fame that you want, but it's a multi step process. It's not just the movie. It's the movie. And then it's another project. And then it's another project. And it's like creating a brand for yourself as not just like a street comedian, but as this host type character like Howie or like Ethan, like you want to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that was, you said something interesting, uh, Jimmy. D Alex did something specifically that hurt you. Uh, can Would you be comfortable sharing that with us today? Well, me and Akira watched the movie. That was the, he's hurt me about four times, but the first one was we watched the movie and we called him and we suggested changes and he started to scream and curse at me and Akira. And Akira actually taped a phone call because she was she couldn't believe it. And, and she said, I'm going to take this because people won't believe he did it. So I said, tape I, it. Very, I, said I don't think upset. you should tape it. But he was so rude. And he he did this with um, with uh, Andrew Callahan's assistant, Jade, who called me, who couldn't believe how he talked to her. And I said, boy, this is being repeated on me. And you know this guy. That's a mischaracterization. Do, do well, you, I'm telling you. Hold on, you hold on, hold on, Alex. Let him let him talk. This is important. Uh, you're, yeah. You're you're, right. a, you're asking me a question. So, Ethan, you know, I talked to uh, Brad from Newsmax and Mason and about four people about this, and they said normally there's a round table when you do a movie, and there's always people talking about things that maybe don't fit, or maybe it's too long, or maybe there's too much time <laughs> in it. And uh, maybe the movie should be shorter. And I watched Sly's documentary three times, and it's mostly a documentary. There's not that much about his filming. So I was suggesting that um, there's too much comedy in. So, Jimmy, uh, uh, if I can... It, hold it, hold it, hold it. Go ahead, go and, ahead. Go and ahead. the way he painted my brother and I, it made me look bad, not my brother. And the mozzarella boss, as much as I'm friends with Rob, he doesn't fit in the movie. But um, now I to know To be why. fair, it was very uh, shoehorned <laughs> oh, in the Moss he put, him, he put him in the movie. Now I know why, because he was going to make a movie on him. So he, but he didn't tell me that yet. But I'm not making a movie. Hold okay, hold, hold on, it. hold on. Wow, this, this is, okay, hold, hold on. It. This is interesting. This is, this is what Alex said. Jim, I put him in, not because he fits in, but because he has the same dreams of you. I said, but people won't understand it. But the real reason he put him in, then was so he could get a vibe on him to make a little movie, which he made today. So basically, the thing I said to you earlier, Ethan, about people having ulterior motives and not being honest with you, that doesn't build relationships with people. That That's one thing I preface myself, <laughs> honesty, integrity, and always doing a lot for people. There's a movie called yeah. Supermensch with Chef Gordon. He talks about coupons. 
where you're always doing a lot of things for people and you can redeem coupons when you want. And I built my dental business on it, my relationships with people on always doing a lot of nice things for people. And then when you get a coupon, if they're a mensch, they respond. So you're, you're asking me, honestly, I'm, I'm being very honest. That's I, 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 Jimmy, I don't, I can't say that I've seen you be this vulnerable and I really appreciate it. It seems to me if I can extrapolate the big slight happen between Mott's boss and Alex, you believe that Alex and so, hold on, let me let me paraphrase and yeah, let's see yeah, if this is accurate and then you can respond. Okay. You think Alex put Mott's boss in the film, which was shoehorned in. I'll grant you that it's because he wanted to launch another documentary with Correct. Mott's boss. And so you so feel put him in. He put him in. <laughs> and I thought I believed Alex when he said to me, oh, no, you don't understand Jim movies. He called me an idiot and said he's in because he has the same dream of you. I go, he doesn't fit in the movie. And me and Akira were politely telling him things to edit and just talking nicely. And he was cursing at me on the phone saying, I don't give a F about Akira. She's a nobody. Who's Akira? Really I didn't Akira say she's works a nobody. Me social she... media and helps me. And she's a very uh, nice is person. Is she an employee? She... Do you pay her? No. She no, they do her. social media for me. But she was you... very hurt. You and pay her? I don't even want to say what she said about you, Alex, but she's right. Because you All were right. so well, to me and her. Let me, let, can I, I, can I respond, it. can I respond to this now? You can do what you want. Ethan's asking me and I'm being very honest. I, no, 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 I just, I, I'd like to say my piece here because I feel like I'm being mischaracterized as someone so, who's so, very angry. And so, I think like. Go ahead. Yeah, go I'm ahead. I'm not angry. I'm being honest. Okay, so no, hold no, on. you are being, you are being hold, honest. Uh, let me, hold on, guys. Let me, I got to moderate person. a little bit here to keep this uh, watchable. Jimmy, thank you for being so vulnerable and honest. I'm very grateful. Alex, obviously there's been a lot said, so let me give you this time to respond, and let's just let Alex talk. So, let me hit a couple of things. We'll go in chronological order. Andrew Callahan's producer, Jade, called me when the trailer came out. She was very upset because Jimmy promised them up and down that, they would not, that he would not post anything with Andrew. I told Jimmy that I intended on putting Andrew Callahan in the trailer, um, and Jimmy said, well, if you do that, can I blame the whole thing on you? I said, absolutely. That, you did say I could blame it, but I said, yeah, so, do not do <laughs> it because I told her. No, you didn't say don't do it. You I, got stars in your eyes. You got stars in now, your eyes and we round tabled I, about it the, and you decided I, that it would be a good idea to include it in the trailer. And we, we all agreed. It was my idea. I wanted to do it. And I came to you and I said, please, can I do this? I know you promised them, but I want to release this. I'll be Andrew, back in a minute. All right. Well, I can go to the bathroom. Okay. So, thank you, Jimmy. That's okay. Andrew, right. Andrew made a big stink about us not releasing any footage. So hold and, on. This is, this is a whole different thing. You guys met up with Andrew Callahan. And then, that, in the movie, there's a scene where we meet Andrew. Yeah, yeah and then he, he asked you guys not to use the footage. He asked Jimmy not to use the footage. He kind of big-timed me, and, and I kept saying, I'm not part of this. I'm a separate filmmaker doing my own thing. I'm going to use this. And, he kind of, and I gave him my number, and I said, I'm going to use this very, very soon. And he kind of big-timed me and ignored me, which is fine. Um, but then his producer, Jade, called me and was asking me to remove the video. And I was like, absolutely not. I, I I put this out there and it's got Jimmy in it and like uh, you know the tendrils reaching in it, this affects so many people I mean it's really remarkable this whole why movie did, was why a, did, was a crazy disaster in so many ways but why was it that um that Andrew didn't want you to include the footage do you think because he was making his it was before his comeback and he wanted <clears throat> to have the most clout from his comeback and he didn't want us to like scoop him on like his big return and i didn't care about his big return because of the allegations and whatever so i was like fuck this guy i'm just going to put him in the fucking trailer uh, you know it is what it is i mean cuz it's... it's an interesting part of the movie it's like a huge interesting thing that jimmy and andrew met like why would that ever happen i agree it got me intrigued definitely but i'll say something that i think maybe jim uh jimmy if i just want to say that i gave the girl my word and i he felt did. bad when he did it and the girl called me and i told her to call him and you ripped her a new a-hole, and she called me and said, that guy is the biggest a-hole I ever met. Not a good building relationship type of guy. 
That's All what right, they basically well, said. Well, that's what. And then you did. They it to asked me. Nakira. I'm not trying to build a relationship with you them. You did it to me, and Akira, when we when we gave you feedback on the documentary. You told me. You told <laughs> me to re-edit the whole movie, well, Jimmy. You said on. it was bad. You said it was no. boring. You said it had to be no, completely that redone. That is a lie. That's what you're that lying is, again. Hold on, guys. Lying, hold on. Hold on. I said you oh. could. Take a few things out and shorten it. I did not say redo the whole movie. No, you said Stop it had to, I had to put you all want, of the FOMO at the beginning. The movie. No. No. One, I, if I, I had to put all, can I make a whatever. point? Um, Jimmy, I believe there's something you, you might be missing in that. You're the subject of the documentary. You you're, get you're, not, exactly. you're not supposed to have editorial control of what the documentary becomes. Because then... It's just a puff piece and not a genuine slice of life. So I think well, if well then I'm then I'm wrong. I thought that there was a round table and everybody talks and agrees. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the filmmaker is creative and does his thing then. Then I then I'm wrong. Well, I was just so upset when I raised my I voice to you that. and I told you this. I was so I was so upset because I told you I said I sent him the link. And this was this was after we'd had a big, a big disagreement where he had we he had said that I had to pay for a meal for his crew and stuff and and we and I wasn't gonna send him the movie before it came out but I decided I was gonna because he kind of like we had this whole thing and we made right and he was like okay well I want to see the movie and I said okay but go home and watch it alone please watch it alone <laughs> and he watched it on his phone in a diner with Akira. And I was like, why did you do that? That's not how to watch this movie that I like, I slaved over. I did so much for this movie. And you like, you pissed it away on like watching it at fucking Ponzio's on your phone. And then you were like, it's bad. And I'm like, well, it's not bad. It's I, good. I you you it, watched it in a dime. You did say I it's bad. You said it's bad. It. No, I didn't. No, you said. I think and then I, I the think reason I, why I was upset at Akira was you yeah. said you said it was very emotional at the end for both of us. And Akira goes, well, not both of us. Uh, and I was like, I was upset. I was like, what the hell, Akira? What did I ever do to you? <laughs> now, I, I think I can, I understand what's happening here. On one hand, Jimmy, you have to appreciate how much work and time and love Alex put into creating this documentary. And I think that when you, when he finishes it after long, long lasting uh, tons of work, to re receive that kind of criticism is perhaps certainly would make uh, me feel unappreciated. But then on the other side, Jimmy, I understand that you feel slighted because of um, the potential collaboration between Alex and Mott's boss, and you feel like people were, uh, you felt deceived in how their relationship uh, came out. So I see two very different um, wrongs that we were, were, were perceiving. But I don't think it's anything that we can't work out. It seems, Jimmy, like I'm talking to you and you say you didn't understand how that works. So in a documentary, the roundtable thing is real. But in a documentary, Jimmy, you're the subject, right? So that's the difference. And so we had a roundtable of producers, by the way, who like my friends who all watched it and gave me feedback. Just to clarify. So it, it makes sense to me that you wouldn't be involved on that just because you're the subject. And it said, okay. you said maybe I'm right, so maybe you're willing to... Um... So if that's how movies work, then, and I'm the subject, then I have to, when I work with a film person, you know, I have to maybe research stuff and, you know, talk ahead of time so we're all kind of on the same playing field and tell the filmmaker kind of what I'd like in it and what I expect to make sure I'm comfortable, which I didn't do. But Jimmy, Jimmy, fault. I don't think you're going to find any serious filmmaker that will make a documentary about you on those terms. Okay. I'm I just, and, and I'm just saying that, uh, well, because that's how documentaries work. Otherwise it's just a PR piece, you know? Yeah. Right. And then and you Jim, should, you're, if, if now that's you're attacking me and telling me that I'm like, that I'm attacking everyone and making really <laughs> mischaracterizing me. I feel like, um, everyone else I've worked with like Olivia and Peebler and everyone who I've worked with on the movie and including Mason too, is a nice things to say. And I think like, I was n very understandably like passionate and also like super upset to hear that you didn't like this and movie. Texting, we had so many texting all my social media people to create drama and trouble. None of them like that, Alex. When you started, Jimmy, you you because I was you upset that you asked text, me to pay for a meal. So for, you for your started whole crew. to That's text all my that. people <laughs> to text all my people and create problems and they're texting me. Why is this guy bothering me? 
You're like a troublemaker. Pal. Okay, one sec, one I'm sec. I'm not a troublemaker. On, I didn't sec, understand guys. why you asked me to pay for the meal. Guys, hold yes, on. This is are. new. This is yes, new you information. Are. You're a troublemaker. Hold on pal. one sec. Hold on, Jimmy. Well, let's let's figure this out. No, because I'm angry because he no, creates yeah. a lot of problems, Ethan, for me unnecessarily. I understand. I didn't My create any of these constantly, problems for your team, and he lies a lot. Yes, you do. That's not yes, true, do. Jimmy. Jimmy, yes, you, you do. You uh, hold on, guys. Hold on, Olivia guys. Uh, Olivia has a interjection. I'd like to hear from her. Well, wow, that was um, quite the battle there. Um, but I just, I feel because like because I tell the truth, Olivia. I don't have to lie. That's why. Okay, right. Jimmy, Jimmy. One moment, Jimmy. please. Jimmy, love you, Jimmy. Okay, just um, stay there for a second. Um, <laughs> but. I think that you guys both have like worked on this and Jimmy, I understand that, like a lot of things for you with the time, you know, you're trying to get big really fast, right? Like you're trying to get big fast. So things have to be in your time. Right. Um, I think Alex was like working with that and also like the whole thing of like you guys both getting emotional and like um, going back and forth, like while working. Um, I mean, man, you guys are getting emotional now, and it's making me lose track of, like, what you guys are even saying. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I forget what I was even saying. Olivia, can I ask you, did you receive a text from Alex that you perceived as shit-stirring? Oh, that's what Jimmy was talking about. Okay. So, basically, no. I, no one thought that. P. Blur thinks, like, Alex is fine. Um, no one thinks it's a drama stir -up. People were actually wanting to talk to Alex and like have Jimmy like know about the scenario too because Jimmy was getting um kind of painted as a guy who like can't be worked with and like doesn't have time or consideration for filmmakers, which Alex defended him on. So like now people in the future will know that you know Jimmy is able to future. able to like um be filmed and stuff stuff like that. A A Mason, did what text message did you receive from Alex? Um, I don't recall anything with me. I mean, we we did. We're um, got, pretty friendly. You got messages because you told me, Mason. Well, you're, you're talking about that when. So what happened was, it was uh, we were supposed to go out on Saturday to celebrate the movie coming out, and what happened was Jimmy called me and he said, "I want to go to Balthazar, which is a very expensive restaurant in Manhattan. Very, very, very expensive." And Mind you, he does not pay his crew, so the meal that he gives them is their payment. And he said, listen, you never pitch in. I want you to pitch in for the meal at Balthazar. Is that is that a false characterization, Jimmy? I did say I that. Do you know why I said it? And you said that you said really it because I was... Hold on, hold on. Jimmy, why did you say that? Why? Because this is... This is to go. This is Alex. I got all these jobs, I got all this money, I got a big apartment building in New York, I make a lot of money, I said, well, grab a check. You're a big shot. That's not grab true. You called me poor a bunch. You kept no, calling me poor. No, no, no. You said I, I live in the you, tenements. You kept egging me on. You said I live on, in the tenements, Like, what Jimmy. a big shot you are. Hold on, and, hold on. No, you hold said on. I live in the tenements. Hold, 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 hold on. Uh, Alex, what, what are, are you, um, what is your financial situation, if I may ask? I am a freelance producer. I do a little bit of work for MTV, doing like video editing sometimes, and I mostly do work for Media Matters, which is like a uh, sure. It's like a you know Media political Matters. activist group, right? So yeah. like it's a nonprofit. I don't make a lot of money. Um, I don't make a lot of money on YouTube. I finance this all out of my pocket. I live in Bushwick. Um, Jimmy. Tells me I'm poor a lot, so I'm like Jimmy. You I'm not poor. You told me what a big shot you were, all no, your connections I, and how rich you were. So I said, grab a check. You made me do it because you egged me on, my brother. You did. Don't I didn't egg it. you on. Yes, I you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Do you think? Do you did, did? Did you ever say anything like that to Jimmy, Alex, where you were maybe suggesting that you were uh, uh, very successful? Very yeah, successful. Well, this financial. is what happened. Yes, he did. The 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 night that the night before we were supposed to go out, I was doing work on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Awards. I was doing video editing, social media work for them. I got five hundred dollars for the night. Five hundred dollars? Um, you told me you get thirty five hundred dollars. Wait no, a minute. I, I never said that, Jimmy. Oh my got, God! You're so I'm leaving. You're full of shit. You're hold on, such Jimmy, a no, Jimmy, don't leave. We're 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 we're, I'm not, we're getting I, to somewhere. I don't know, like... He lies about everything. <laughs> He's a fucking liar, man. He told me thirty five hundred dollars to do that. He told Jimmy, me he's a big right, Jimmy, shot. Jimmy, Jimmy, can you just sit? 
No, I don't know what I can't stand being lied to. Jimmy, you, how about liar. this? Jimmy, how about All this? He does is lie. Jimmy, hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe, Jimmy, just, if you want to just take a, maybe, I don't know, if you want to excuse yourself and cool off, yeah, but please come it. back. Come back, okay? I think, like, Jimmy... Right. Thank you. Mott's boss. Hold on one I'm... sec, guys. Mott's boss, you have something to say? Ethan and everyone, including Jimmy Lee and Alex and all the great people at H3, thank you for having me. I have to go. <laughs> I appreciate everything. The show's great. Thank the you, Mott's boss. The cheese can't wait. Can uh, 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 Mott's boss, one last thing I wanted to ask you if you're not, an, if it's not urgent. Um, did you go behind Jimmy's back and attempt to become the star of your own documentary? That is something he brought up. Absolutely not. Right. I would I would never. In fact, I even said to Alex, why do I have such a big part in this? It should have been five minutes. <laughs> well, Alex, why did he and have Jimmy. such a big part in it? I would love to address that because there's been a lot of controversy surrounding the mozzarella bosses scene. And I think like. The movie is not about Jimmy or the mozzarella boss or any of that. The movie's called Just About Famous. It's about like this. Jimmy is like an empty void of want uh, and of desire. And even if he got Sylvester Stallone famous today, he would still want more and more. He's like this empty void of want and need. And that's like a relatable, interesting thing for an audience. I so see. I think like thematically it tied is, in. Yeah. I see. That makes sense. Can I, can I also just say, I'm a really small time guy. I'm not, I feel like there's a lot of mischaracterizations being made about me at the very beginning of my career on the internet here. This is like my first thing, you guys. And like, I was with Jimmy Lee and I worked with him for like four or five months and we talked every day. Like, obviously there's some volatility there, but like, I'm being like attacked here and I am very uh, defensive, obviously, but also like, <laughs> Uh, I, I, I like don't know what to do. This is uh, I'm very well Alex I'll say I don't think that you need to Feel overly defensive simply because I don't think anyone besides Jimmy thinks you really did anything that wrong So I think the the problem that I'm focuses on is more the interpersonal relationship between the two you guys because professionally Alex I don't think you have anything to worry about from this situation to be frank with you well, I should just stop looking at chat, to be honest. That's that always a good... Uh, there you go. Yeah. Let's not look at chat. Hi, um, chat. <laughs> all right. But, um, Mason... May, may the force be with you. All right. May the force right. be Thank with you. Thank you so much, Mott's Robots. <laughs> there we go. Right. We'll Mots, talk tomorrow, Mott's yeah, we'll Boss. Yeah, we'll talk tomorrow. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mott's. Thank you. And, um, Jimmy, is his around. mozzarella good? Would you Would you concede that, at least? Be mad at me, Ethan, but I never tasted it. I'm being honest. It's so good. Wow. It's the best. He's I ate it many sure times. I'm sure it's good, but I never, I never tasted it. I'm not a big cheese eater. I'm being honest. But don't you I'm think... I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> That's okay. why. Okay, all right. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. You don't eat cheese. That's fair. I'm not a cheese guy. Okay. Mason, you, you need to... Mason, how are you doing down there? You have any thoughts? I, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm zoned right now, bro. I'm just You're not in here. More than any, no, I'm not here. No. Okay, cool. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, thank you guys so much for having me on. It was, uh, oh, it's it nice was, to see you. I love it. Was I, great so to nice to see you. Well. Yeah. Well. All right, you guys have a good rest of your night. Okay? All right, you take we care. Go, Mason. go okay. chill. Right. Go relax. Thanks, Mason. Right, bye, everybody. <laughs> poor, poor Mason. Lays out his mind. Mason, trying, to, trying to process all this. Yeah. This is crazy. This is like, guys, what is, like, oh my God. I, I've been, I've just, my whole existence <laughs> on YouTube. I've been watching this show and watching you, and now I'm here, and it's like Jimmy Lee is attacking me live on the air. My best friend, my brother, the guy who I love with all of my heart, Jimmy. Uh, can we please I, I, understand? I, I, I love you. Why? We we. What I feel Jimmy? we can. Please. Let's I didn't lie to you. Let's explore uh, because I feel like Jimmy's being really vulnerable right now, and this is a good opportunity. Jimmy, if he could be honest as a person about things okay let's go one by I one i don't mind i don't mind being friends with a person ethan who has integrity and who's honest so jimmy cares. let me stop you what name first of all let's name one thing that you feel alex lied about let's start with just one thing and let's start there well he told me how much he gets paid for his freelancing gigs it's always like two to three thousand dollars he just told you 500 and he told you on the air 
that he never told me that. Okay, he, Jimmy. That's okay, a lie. That's, that's a lie. So Alex, that did, hurts me. Makes me not trust him, Ethan. So Alex, did you ever tell Jimmy you make that much money per gig? When I so when I do work for MTV, I make a lot more money because I work for like a week <laughs> and I'll make a day rate. Got it. I don't know if I'm supposed to be saying any of this, by the that's way. Okay. This, might, you, you this might ruin all of this for me. But anyways. Nah, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Awards was for Disney. Jimmy tried to get a ticket to the show, and then he asked me to get him a ticket to the show. I told him I couldn't get him a ticket because this is my first time working like with That's with true. Lion. That's true. And he said, if you were really my friend, you would do that. If you really cared about me, you would pull strings and do that. You and said, I said that, Jimmy? I said, if you if you could pull... No, I said, if you can pull strings, get me a ticket. That, and you said, uh, you said you could do it if you really wanted to. And I said, I do really want to. I just can't do that for this. And also, like, you could have bought it. There were tickets online. Ever, like, it was like a public event. And I just, like, I couldn't get you backstage because I was down underneath Barclays Center. And, like, I just, like, I was out of my element. It was not, like, mm -hmm. an MTV gig. I've worked with them for, like, mm -hmm. four years. This is, like, my first time working. I gave mm -hmm. them a really good deal to do it because I just, like, right. wanted to be there and be, like, mm -hmm. on the Foot in the door. Yeah, foot in the door. Yeah, you Again, understand. I'm really small. I'm really, really small. I'm brand new. Yeah, Jimmy, you understand when your foot's in the door, you're not in a position to be asking for favors and stuff. You know what I mean? He portrayed to me all the time that he was a big shot. So you how told me poor. You told you? me I live in the town. Okay, okay, okay. Do okay. you not say I live in the how town? He's <laughs> talking to how he's if talking. I can interject something, it, to go back to the beginning, and thank you, Gabe, by the way, for sticking it around. I appreciate that. It makes me feel better to know that Gabe's here. Honestly, that's like taking a huge weight off any, of my shoulders. Do you want to add anything, Gabe? It's nice to see you. It's nice to feel your presence. Well, I'd say it's a war. Who, who believes who's lying? Who believes who's honest? It's just I can't really tell. But to my thing, I think I think Jimmy's trying to twist tongues to see that he's a liar. Mm. But I don't, I don't believe it. I don't know. So Gabe is saying that he's potentially getting the vibe that Jimmy is the one being not honest. Yeah, I don't think that's I true. I think perception is reality. <laughs> and I think Jimmy, I think Jimmy really like, I think he feels slighted by me and that's really real. And I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry for that. I don't want you to feel like, like I was representing, like I had all this money to you. It's just, you kept telling me, Jimmy, all the time, how much of a poor loser I am. You tell me I'm young. What did I, I say? No, what did I say you that you're a I, poor loser? You made I me feel that. like that. You told me I'm what? young. I have no experience. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did I say that? Hold on, you, hold on, you hold, said on, hold, on hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to make this totally clear. Stop, stop. What did, did he you, say did exactly? That? Hold on, Jimmy. What did he say exactly, Alex? What exactly he said to me was, he would he would put these fake articles in like LA Wire and stuff like that, and he's like, "Look, I added you to the article, and you know, I didn't tell them how young you are, or how you haven't worked on anything, or how nobody knows who you are. I just called you a top notch filmmaker." <laughs> So you felt, and, and Olivia, I see maybe you are nodding and agree. Hold on, no, Jimmy, give me one sec. Olivia, do you, can you corroborate that at all? Because I saw you nodding. She was there when he said this. Oh, Jimmy's called me poor. Um, <laughs> like, this is nothing new. <laughs> Wait, what? Is, Jimmy's called me poor before. Like, this is nothing new. Like, this is, I, I'm not, like, I'm, I don't know why anyone's shocked. Like, this is, like, yeah, like, this is classic Jimmy. Jimmy, she's saying. So, Jimmy, he, <laughs> he, he, he has, he, I understand, okay. Jimmy, I don't know if you can hear me. He's like, okay right now. But I understand where you're coming from in that he has a way of being condescending. Yeah, he has uh, a way with words. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, like, do you have any like, other questions while he's, like, um, on a leave of absence? That's a good point. Well, basically... It's interesting. Yeah. I get the sense that he's just a real sensitive guy, and he he doesn't have a it's not easy for him to analyze his own behavior but he has a really easy time analyzing other people's behavior and when he feels slighted it, it's part of his condition frankly i believe i think it might be again i'm not a i'm not a professional and i don't want to diagnose him but there are personality disorders that have fear of abandonment and fear of being slighted and fears of being, you know, that people didn't really like you. 
And I think that we're seeing symptoms of that. And frankly, Jimmy went through a really turbulent childhood. And so these kinds of issues really um, can, can, you know, rear their head uh, even, even as he, you know. And so, so in a sense, I, I sympathize with him. But in another sense, I, I understand that it would be hard to have interpersonal relationships with him uh, when he can come down quite harshly on you guys. Um, He's coming down with Thor's hammer on me right now. I don't I know mean, what to say. Yeah, like, Jimmy, he wants to get famous, and, like, he is a sweet guy, but, um, you know, he, he has a goal in mind, and he's going to put himself first, and, like, you know, um, that's his goal, you know, ultimate FOMO. So, Jim, Jimmy, uh, now that you're back, I understand from Alex, essentially, that he felt condescended to at times, like he had mentioned when you included him in the write-up, that you put an emphasis on like that he has no experience, that he's a nobody and all this kind of things that made him feel so like you were talking that, down to that, him. That again is a lie because when I spoke to the editor, I said write something punchy about the filmmaker. So I think one of the articles said he's a top notch New York filmmaker. I would never. No, it wasn't in the article when hard. you called me on the phone and said, don't worry, I would never tell anyone how young and inexperienced you are. I tell them all you're a top-notch guy. It, and it's like, I, I've worked, you know, I have my own credits. Did I, I say I, that I, to you, Alex? You, Olivia was there. She was sitting right next to me when you said it. You said definitely said that to me, Jimmy. Okay. So are you, is that an acknowledgement that, uh, or, or are you denying it that it happened, Jimmy? I, I, I never said that. What I said is I'm going to paint in a nice light in the article, which I did. But Jimmy, is it, is it, Jimmy, is it possible that sometimes you communicate and you're not aware of even how you're saying, how things you're saying are coming off? I think that, I will, I yeah. will say this about me. I do say things wrong sometimes and yeah. I come off, but my, <laughs> and my wife will tell you this. My heart is always in a good spot, and I love people, and all I want to do is be loved, and I don't have a mean bone in my body. And I will always stand by the people that are that help me and, and do right. Just like with Alex, he is a new guy on a block, but I made sure in the article that he was painted nicely because he did my film, and I went on Harry Mandel, thanks so, to you, so and I said something very just, nice about uh, Alex, Jimmy, so. just to analyze, it is what, what, it you, is. what you just said was a little condescending to Alex. Okay. And I also told you when you went on Howie and when you went on the podcast the first time with the trailer, not to mention, I kept saying, don't mention my name. Just let the movie speak for itself. Like, I don't want to, it's like, it's not about me. It's about the movie. And so like, but, you, know, you just kept focusing on like returning to me, like giving me some sort of like uh, uh, quid pro quo. And then it, what I realized was that later it was so that you could turn to me and try to tell me what's what about the final cut of the movie. Alex, that's that's not, not, Al, Alex, that's not why I did. Alex, listen, I will win with you. We did a movie. You did a good job. I'm not going to win with you. I'm not going to fight with you. I'm older. That's the end. I'm Jimmy, not, we were we're best friends. I don't, I don't understand know. why you're know. suddenly acting like we're not. And now, and now you've attacked me on my favorite show. I don't. I don't want to attack you. I, I you just I, did. You, I don't uh, want to be bothered. Can, can, I, my movie, can I comment, please? my movie and that's it. Alex, if I can maybe give some advice to you, is that when working with someone like Jimmy, who is this, you know, larger than life character, let's put it in a nice way, um, that it's, I think it's important to not take things personally as much as that's possible. Obviously, you're close with him. But Jimmy, obviously, um, He's a, he's a funny guy. I mean, he's the outlaw. So, like, it's <laughs> you you know what I mean. Like, he's he's a flame. He's a hot flame. He's burning. You know, you got if you stand next to the flame, maybe you get burned. I don't know. Um. Yeah. I, mean, I don't have a mean bone in my body, but when when I get misled and things happen and it hurt me, I, I, people aren't honest with me. I don't want to have that relationship. I'm sorry. That's uh, all can I, I, I That makes me really sad. Cause I, I, know, I, me, I, I just, Alex makes me more sad than you, to be honest with you. To be I'm honest sure. with you, Jimmy, I, I didn't do this for views or to go on the pod. I never wanted to be sitting here on the H3 podcast. That is like my nightmare, Stop. to be honest. I'm a watcher of this Hold show. on, let him finish, Jimmy, let him finish. 
He was I, in the live chat last week on Monday, according to Mason, texting for to call in. Okay, well, yeah, he's a fan of the show. That's nothing wrong I was with that. texting a call in because yeah, now it's like about... about but you just said about. you never wanted to be on the podcast. Hold on, hold on. You're texting oh, in the live chat Jimmy, to go Jimmy, on this yeah. week. J you're uh, lying Olivia, again. Uh, Jimmy, hold he's on. Lying lying again. Jimmy, you're, I think you're you're building <laughs> mountains out of molehills, as the expression Mason goes. Mason texted me he was on the live chat. Jimmy, that's come not... on to the show. He just said he never wanted to be but on But Jimmy, show. that's not that serious. Because I Olivia, wanted to you talk were... about the movie. Now. Yeah, I was going to... Go ahead, Olivia. It's like hard for me to even keep track of my thoughts with like the peanut... Like, 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 but, um, <laughs> what is it? Gabe, so, uh, Gabe, what's happening? Are you? What are you doing? Yeah, I just ordered something to eat, and I was oh, like, cool. I hope they don't take my food away. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm still outside. I'm still, I'm still on the <laughs> That's podcast. what's up, dude. Let's get that food yeah. going. Oh, yeah. I just ordered some food. I don't want them to take my food away. Hell no. Good. Yeah. You're the Come man. Um, sorry, Olivia. Go ahead. I had to touch in touch um, base with Gabe. Yeah, that's okay. We love Gabe. Yeah. Um, so Appreciate the love, my bro. You guys are the best. Love you, yeah. buddy. <laughs> you guys and I'm glad to be on the podcast on it's not it's not Friday yet but it's Monday Monday yeah baby Happy Monday Monday's as good as day as any my friend so uh, uh, go ahead Olivia go ahead yeah yeah so um to keep track of my thought <laughs> um oh yeah uh Jimmy is like oh Mason told me they were in the uh, he was in the live chat I mean, after the call with Mike, like, even I was in the live chat, because, like, every time, Jimmy, every time you're on the damn show, I'm in the live chat being like, hey, fact check, man. <laughs> like, what? like, I do it, too. Yeah. Like, I'm a fan of the show. Yeah. Like, Jimmy, people, your FOMO crew exists because of Ethan Klein. Like, I, I know, know, I know, I know Ethan that. Klein. Okay. So, so, like, the reason why Alex is in the chat, like, saying he wants to talk is he wants to speak to his work. <laughs> like, if I, if I drop eight bands on a movie, oh, you bet, you bet I'm, I'm... Olivia, I'm it's call. okay that he was in the live chat and he said he wanted to be on, but he just said to Ethan he never wanted to be on this show. I, I did it before. Hold on, Jimmy, hold on, hold on. He lies. No, it's Jimmy, true. hold on. Jimmy, I think lies. you're taking things <laughs> too does. literal. Jimmy, yeah. you're taking... It's too literal. Just be what he's saying is I don't want to be in this scenario. Yeah. I don't want to be in this scenario yeah. where I have Jimmy bickering at me from Cherry Hill. I have this person doing this. Like I have this person saying that. That's not the scenario he wants to be in. Everyone wants to come onto the H3 podcast like and show their work. Like Alex is in film and art. I'm just a college student who happens to live and, in and that's okay he wants to be on, but then why did he just say he doesn't want to be on? That no, was my Jimmy, point. Jimmy, you're, you're... Well, I feel like we're focusing on the wrong thing Jimmy, here. He Jimmy, did not want to be in the podcast like this. Like this. This scenario is not ideal. This is not ideal for him. Jimmy, right? you're, you're, you're on the defensive. I think you're looking for... I don't like people that lie. He didn't not lie, lying, though, man. Jimmy. I don't know that that's an accurate representation, for example, of what just happened. But was, this is this is an accurate representation of how things go with Jimmy. If I can speak without being interrupted, Jimmy, it's that like he's misinterprets something and then attacks. And like what I'm trying to say here is like I didn't I didn't want to be on the show. I wanted Jimmy to go on the show and talk <laughs> about the movie. If if you guys wanted to talk to me, maybe. But like the whole design of the movie is that I don't have to say anything. That the movie speaks for itself. That Jimmy can kind of speak for the movie, and like. It just it, it just should have been that and like it it spiraled into this crazy thing with Mike and now with this and like now I'm just like on the show and like Jimmy's screaming at me calling me a liar and like and I'm feeling like oh my god like what what is happening here like I, I just I, I just don't understand why why it's come to this instead of like like I'm, I'm just not in this for the cloud or anything. I just want to make movies that connect with people, and that was what I thought I was doing here. I think I, if I can do this, like uh, Ethan's last word, maybe uh, you know, like another show. Um, <laughs> Jerry Springer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Ethan's I didn't, want, I didn't want to invoke that name. Right. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. What we do is obviously a lot more. Yeah. Scary. Completely original. <laughs> Um, Alex, I have to, I think maybe when dealing with Jimmy, it's important to not take things too seriously. I mean, he's done so much to people in this crew that if we were to treat Jimmy 
if we were to just take it as it were, then a lot of us would probably be very cross with him. But I do find that with Jimmy, it's important to, again, not take things too literally, not take th things too personally. And you're not wrong for doing that, by the way. But I just feel that with J Jimmy, he's a, he's, a, he's a butterfly. And what I mean by that is that he's a unique individual. Every butterfly's wing pattern is different, and Jimmy is no exception. And, 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 and then to, to summarize something else, Jimmy, to go back to the restaurant, even if you thought, Jimmy, that Alex was a big shot, I don't think it's right to expect him to chip in on this meal. I mean, um, I, it was this Jimmy brought you guys out for a meal, right? I, I, I didn't. I didn't want to go to a meal at all. I said, let's wait until we see how the movie does. And he wanted to go out and shoot FOMO on the street. And I said, okay, well, like when he goes and shoots that, he has his people with him for the day. And he wanted them to go out to eat at Balthazar. <laughs> and he was like, you should pay for it. And I was just like, listen, I don't even want to come. And I'm not filming the movie anymore. There's no reason for me to like be there filming or anything. And he was like, well, you can shoot my stuff for social media. So, and so, I was like, but I don't really do that. So, Jimmy, you can understand why. He, he first of all, even if you thought he's a big shot, I mean, he's not a you're obviously much wealthier than he is. I mean, you're a well-established uh, dentist, for Christ's sake. But you can't bring people out to a super fancy restaurant and ask them to split it with you. I mean, that's just It not... wasn't split it. He wanted me to pay the bill I, I at that whole I don't restaurant. Eat How much was the bill? Do you remember? It would have been It would have been like three... I've, I've been there with him before, and it's like two, three hundred dollars. I, I think like... It, it wasn't about the bill. It's that that's how he pays his crew. And he's basically asking me to pay his crew. And it's like, that's why are interesting. you? It, the only the, reason, Ethan, I did it was he was pontificating of his connections, how much money, his big apartment building. And he was acting like he had a lot of money. It's, it's still sense. not right. So though, I, Jimmy. Robert, I wasn't I, pontificating on how much money I have. Uh, but, it, hold, but Jimmy, it's still not right to for, to foist the bill on him. I, I don't think that even right, if... So I, I, I could have been wrong on that. I just did it because he was trying to carry on like he was a big wing. That's the argument. That's not true. It was because you wanted to come to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Awards and I couldn't get you in. And then you were like, well, then you should just use the money from it. Absolutely nothing to do with it, Alex. Then you You're should just use the again. money from it. I, I mean, that's, that's my... It's not... Jimmy, Jimmy. It's, that's my perception. Jimmy, hold on, again. guys. Jimmy is not a the lie. The Rock and Roll Music Awards hold has on. nothing to do Jimmy. with it. I always said it because you were acting like a fucking big shot. So Jimmy, said, hold on. Check if you're a big shot. Hold on. That's the only reason I said it. Jimmy, he's not lying. He's explaining his perception of events. He's not lying. He's explaining Nothing his to feelings. Do with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It came up one time on a phone call, and it got dismissed. It, you, when I told you lie. that I got hired for it, you you got really excited and you tried to get tickets, and then you called me two days before and you said. Can you please get me in? I said, I really can't do it. I wish I could. And then no, you I said, well, how you much? And then, go, and and then you said, going. how much are you getting paid for it? And I said, I'm getting paid like 500 bucks. I'm taking a really big deal. I'm not giving them any. I'm not making a lot of money. You were making 2,500. You lied No, I said, I'm not making a lot of money on this. All right. All right. Uh, all yeah. Lie. Yeah. We're, we're, re we're rehashing. You lie uh, about oh. everything. That's all you do is lie. We're done, pal. We're done. Uh, I'm not working with I a hate, lie. I hate to hear that. I'm Jimmy, sorry, Ethan. Was it, I don't know why. It's it your life. But um, I will say that I I truly believe, Jimmy, that <sighs> I think you're you're being really and I understand like um your your point of view, but you're really seeing a lot of lying and malice where I just don't believe there is any. That's my honest opinion from the outside. And I think it's a shame because I think Alex does really care about you. And I think it really just genuinely hurt his feelings that, that uh, to hear you kind of to speak. And Jimmy, you so, told me you take so, make $15,000 a day at your dentistry. Um, so <laughs> if we're talking about how much money someone makes on something. I never said, I didn't say that. I did say that. 
Wait, what was that? Did you see? <laughs> he makes $15,000. On a good day, I can make a, a lot of money. I told him that. That's true. That so, is true. And you're st are you making 15000 a day uh, even now? You mentioned that not, business is not, down. Not often. Not often. But yeah. I said I have good days. Yeah, oh, okay. You called me the other day and said you made 18000 for the day, Jimmy. That's you said cool. you said I'm the big you said I'm the biggest earner here. Nobody earns more than me. Did you not I say did that? Say I'm the biggest Wait, what? Producer. Hold on. What? What was the context of that? Why would why did he call you and say that? He just calls and he gets I all gassed up. He just, you just said you just said it. you did say it, Jimmy. I said to him in passing once on a good day I make fifteen. I did not call him <laughs> last week and say I made <laughs> I haven't even talked to him in a while. Four well, days. Last time I we did. talked was Friday. Ethan, yeah. I won't win with this guy. He made a film. He did do a nice job, and that's it. I, I don't really feel we can belabor and go anymore with him. I understand. I'm I understand. well. I, I, he's an okay guy, but he's not for me, this guy. Well, okay, I'm sorry. I just feel like you've got on my favorite show, and you've soured a lot of people against me at the very beginning of my career. I, I wouldn't take, Alex, I made this, I wouldn't I made take it too really, seriously. I don't uh, think. Yeah. I know, but I know, but there's like a hive mind mentality with chat, and I've definitely been there. So I just, I just want to say that, like, you know, Jimmy, you know what you're doing on some level, and I really do love you, and I care about you, and I don't take it personally that you're I, the one I, doing I, this to me. Alex, I have to disagree. I don't think he knows what he's doing on any level. <laughs> well, I think, like, I, I think, think in that, in that sense, I got to defend him a little bit. I think he knows what he's doing when he when he's saying this stuff and trying to Ethan, paint me in this I'll way because he knows you, how people act Ethan, on the internet. I'll talk to you privately, alone with Zach. At one you point. see how now he's acting like there's going to be something else, and like it's there's, just, not, it's, Alex, there's not Alex. Alex. There's nothing else. It's all done. It's all over, guys. It's so Thank so you. okay. Let's let's wrap it up. I I want to okay, say. You know, was I, it worth all the lie? I I genuinely feel bad that Alex. You know, it seems that you you're a good guy and you did a good job, and that you're you feel uh genuinely hurt. And Jimmy also feels genuinely hurt. It's just a bit of a sad impasse, and uh, it's just a, it's a shame. And I'm sorry to see it, but I think you're both great guys, and I just really wish that you know. We could go back in time. I, I wish we could go back in time. I wish that we could roll back the clock and walk the path again and take a different, you know, make different decisions that would lead us down a path where we're all friends. I wish I could go back in time a lot of times, you know. But we gotta, we gotta stick on the road that we, we chose. And, and I think, you know, as we walk this road, it's important to look back and, and see where we've come from and to know that the people we have crossed paths with, although they may not be in our lives forever, that that crossing will last forever. Well, thank you for that. I like that a lot. That I, I feel like the way it's all, it's all and, washed uh, away now. Gabe, do you have any um, anything you want to say? Closing thoughts? Well, it's kind of like over disagreement, especially going out with people. But if out, if, to me, honestly, if I'm if I invite people over, I don't ask them to chip in. If they want to add, you know, want to chip in, and the rest it's fine. But it's kind of like you know, I don't want to waste people's time. That's that's what I think. <laughs> that's a fair observation, uh, for sure. I like that. That's a fair observation, don't you think, Jimmy? Yeah, he's right. Don't waste time. Especially when that, you no, old. you're not hearing the, no, you're hearing the part you want to hear. He said that you don't invite people out and then ask them to pay. I heard that and I, I'm going to say I'm wrong on that. Okay, okay so that's nice. Uh, that's I'm nice, Jimmy. I'm wrong on that. I, I appreciate, you know what, Jimmy? What? And I, I do want to say, though, I know you're a tough crack to, a tough nut to crack, and I do appreciate how you've been open and vulnerable about things that I know you didn't want to talk about, so I appreciate I, that. I didn't. I did it out of respect to you, and you had everybody on, and I was very <laughs> quiet in the beginning, and you happened to get it out of me like you did a year ago when I didn't want to talk about my family. You got yeah. it out of me. That's twice. Can I ask you um, separately, because I am a fan of Alex's documentary, and the way well, I will say again, Alex made a very good movie on me, and I thanked him for that. 
I really did. He did a very good job. I he, have nothing bad to say about the movie. He, he the involvement of your brother was really um, a fantastic surprise and lended a lot of gravity to the oh. story. Um, what was your feelings about your bro seeing your brother talk about you? Because the way he spoke was very reconcile. He wanted to reconcile. He he. It sounds like he really loves you and misses mm -hmm. you and w and wishes that he could you know mm -hmm. uh, have a ha uh, have a life with you in it. He's hurt me tremendously through awful things he's done to me for the last fifty five years <laughs> since I was a little kid, and I, I it's not healable, Ethan. In one day. Maybe right. when I'm in the studio quietly, yeah. not on the air, I'll sit with you and Zach and I'll tell you everything. And your jaw will drop and you won't believe what he did. I'd so love to. I, I would. Says, yeah. The thing he says on the air makes him look good and makes me look bad. I because see. Because I said the truth about him and he was kind and nice about me. So to a naked eye, they're going to go, Jim is not. They don't nice. know what happened. Like, that. That was but a great, even, yeah. That, you don't know, and and nobody knows the pain I've had through the years with my parents yeah. and my brother, and how mean he was, and he did so many things hurtful, and I can't go back, and I can't forgive when a person hurts me. I am married to my wife, who is probably the kindest, nicest person, whose family's treated me so nice, and they've done so many nice things for me, and I would die for them and do anything because they've just done nothing but love me for me and accept me. And I feel your 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 crew is like that. Before you came, you came late on the last podcast. And I thanked everybody in the crew for 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 um accepting me and loving me. You were late and you can ask the crew that. And I, I believe even, it. No, I, and I even I said to Dan, I, I hope you don't hate me. And he smiled. Yeah, <laughs> no comment. Yeah. I, I, I did that. And I, and I did that because I, I, I don't care about money. I just care about people liking me and and your your crew's been nothing but kind and then by accident i saw that sam made a cake and i i went and thanked her and zach said you're not supposed to know and i'm an idiot but i said that was like the kindest thing you did because little things ethan mean a lot to me my wife's family's like that so when but you when you saw your brother in the film there wasn't warm feelings or nostalgic feelings you felt bitter because it's, well, e it's easy for him to want to reconcile, but their great mystery is that nobody mm -hmm. knows what really happened between you two. Yeah, and I did ask Alex not not to put him in because it was very uncomfortable for me. And Alex found his phone number on his own. He called him on his own, and I, I politely said, "I really am not comfortable having him in." And he put him in, and maybe it did add to the movie. The only it thing did. I'm, I'm little, I promise I'm it did. I'm a little bit sad about, and I'll and I'll say this to Alex is that it makes me look bad and him look good. When honestly, Ethan, I've been hurt tremendously by him my entire life. He's done awful things to me, even up to when my dad died. And he acts like he wants to reconcile. He loves me, this and that. But if you love a person, Ethan, you support them, you nurture them. You take care of them like I would do with my wife or she does with me. You don't rip them down, treat them like shit, and punch them and screw them and do shitty things to them. Okay? Jimmy, you said so you love me, and that's what you did to me tonight. You well, said you, you love me, Alex, and that's what you did tonight. I will, I will say something. I don't really dislike you. I don't like how I got treated by you when you screamed at us and some of the other things you've done in the last week to me. I don't dislike you. I do like you. You did a nice movie. When we were making a movie together, we were very connected. We talked a lot during the day, and I felt a lot of camaraderie with you, and I shared my most intimate moments with you. And then I felt so hurt when I shared my thoughts on the movie and some of the other things you did after the movie. And you hurt me so much that I've been so hurt by my family. It's hard for me to come back to you and love you because you've hurt me. I don't dislike you. I'm just afraid to get hurt anymore by people. All I do is get hurt. And all I do is always take care of people and do everything for them. And I'm too old to get hurt anymore. So I hope that explains it better. I'm not really a bad person. I'm a good person. I don't think you're a bad person at all. I don't think you're a bad But I've been, been hurt so bad. And in the last week, some of the stuff that's happened with you really hurt me. And I, I, I just can't go there now. Maybe in the future I can, but not now. Let me, maybe, maybe just, I do want to end with this. Alex, on your part, 
do you see why perhaps Jimmy was so hurt by the way it seems that you you I, I really you yelled, I really yelled at him no I definitely I what I yelled at him and I'm and I apologize to for to him about it many times I did That's I was true. really That's I was true. really 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 upset when he because he really I mean so hold um, on Alex so so sorry to cut you off so no, 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 Jim sorry. Alex apologizes and understands what no, he, he did. did to upset you now Jimmy may I ask you this do you understand why Alex was so angry that he was yelling at you. Do you understand where he was coming from? He said to me, I'm keeping the film exactly the way it is. I'm not changing it. I don't give a F what you and Akira think. And out there you have Akira watching. But Jimmy, do you understand why he was upset? I did ask you not to show I, the movie honestly, to anyone. Too. Honestly, Ethan, I think he was upset because, you know, when you're an artist and you make, and he put a lot of time and he really did because we talked a lot and I respect that. Maybe it hurt him to hear that I wanted the movie changed and some things changed and it upset yeah. him. But, but the way he treated me and, and what and how it all went down, it was like, I just couldn't believe it. And me and Akira, we were having lunch and we just, when we hung up, I'm like, we're looking at each other like a deer in a headlight. What just happened? Right. But I think you <laughs> really, could be more, really, could it, you, is it possible you could be more forgiving of Alex in that sense that well, it was it, a high if, emotion situation? If, if it was just that one thing, but then other things happened. Okay. All right. So I, I Jimmy, need time, Alex. Let's not dive time. back. Let's not dive back. Yeah. Into let's, it. yeah. Jimmy, my phone's always there if you want to give me a no, call. I, I don't really think, Alex, you're, you're a bad guy. I just got a little misled with you and heard a little bit on a few things. In the last week, I just, I got to take a little break right now. But I'm Jimmy, not angry. Jimmy, That's can awful. I put it in, per, like, if you do, um, you take everyone's teeth and replace it, and you put it, and you're proud of it, and you do all this work, and then the mm -hmm. next day, they come in and say, you know, fuck you, this looks like shit, I hate everything you've done here. I would here. be upset. So yeah. I understand. How yeah, and I, that's I him. He, he, that. this documentary was a, a whole set of teeth for him. I know, and, so and, and it was my first. I understand, and I do understand. That. Yeah. I do. Okay. I do. Good. I really do. So I think I think maybe I don't know if we can resolve this today, but I do feel like potentially Possibly. we've laid we've laid some some positive foundation here for you guys to maybe connect in the future. And Ethan, I, I want to thank you for, in a roundabout way, showing me a little bit about me so I can understand myself because a lot of times I don't. Yeah. And I listening towards the end of this. And I need to take a little bit of look at me sometimes and, you know, understand I'm not always right. Yeah. I'm a straight shooter and I'm a nice guy. You, you're going to, and it, there's nobody more loyal, but, you know, everybody has their faults. And, you know, I have, we all know that personality disorder. So there's things yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and, and listen, you've been so, through such a, such a tur turbulent childhood. I mean, can we end on maybe getting both both of you guys apologizing to each other? That would be really sweet. I, I, I want to say I'm sorry I was hard on you because you know what, Alex? I was. I don't dislike you. I, I was kind of hurt by you with some of the things that happened last week. I don't hate you. That's nice. I don't have feelings like you toward like my brother who was just did so many mad things. And I want to say to you, Ethan, I do really love you. I mean, the things you've done for getting me on Howie or coaching me, I. I owe you like the world. You're like a real friend. You really are. You're well, nice. Person. Jimmy, you're you really. listen. I, I really I, do. I don't know what else to say. You're gonna make me cry. Right now, honestly. Well, Jimmy, you. <laughs> I'm being honest. I'm being honest. Yeah, I understand. And I mean, I'm our, a little our, emotional here. Our relationship isn't in question. I understand. Uh, I understand. Uh, I I know who you are, Jimmy. I understand. I and, want you guys at your crew to know that. There's been instances, nothing to do with Alex or anything, but in the past with some members of my crew or whatever that didn't have your best intentions of heart. <laughs> the first guy I called was Zach, and I told him stuff, and Zach would coach me what to do. <laughs> and a couple of times he may have called you and then called me back, and Zach will say, Jim was there, Jim took care of it, and Jim will always be there for you and will always take <laughs> I appreciate of, that. You're I'm always loyal, day. Jimmy. No one, no one's ever questioned that. You're a loyal motherfucker. That's, I will give right. you that. And I do that with way. my wife's family. Anybody has anything to say about my wife's family, maybe because of their Asian or anything, <laughs> I'll fucking kill them. No, because that's the loyalty <laughs> I have. You, you do say that, though. You love. say that. No, 
Well, he that's just the character. We're not doing right, character. Right. So tonight. if somebody's in character, can they say joke about them being Asian? Yeah, if they're in character. Okay, they're in character. Yeah. But what I'm saying, Ethan, <laughs> is how I am with people who love me and are there for me and take care of me, and 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 I trust them with my life. I will be there for that person forever. <laughs> Jimmy, your apology to Alex, I thought was touching. Alex, uh, no, is no, it, I, I, oh. I do, I do want to say that because I was really rough on him, but. I felt I have some merit and I need a little time to heal. I, Alex hasn't tremendously hurt me. He's done some things that's disappointed me. And so maybe, Jimmy, let's shoot the side. Let, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're, we're building bridges. Jimmy, and then Alex, is there something that you want to say to Jimmy uh, about how James, you handled some things? James Weiner, Jimmy Lee, the Jersey Outlaw. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry in the ways that I've slighted you. I'm so sorry that I got upset with you. I had never really gotten upset with Jimmy before, ever. We've mm -hmm. always just been buddy-buddy, and it was mm -hmm. the first time he'd ever heard me get upset, and I'm sorry. I Thank I was in over my head with this movie, mm -hmm. and I put so much on the line um, financially and just, like, everything. You really, I put, you my, really reached I put that. everything on And I also want to... Um... Hold on, don't cut him off, Jimmy. He's having his moment. Oh, no, because Olivia's... I want to say something nice to her, well, too. Okay, well, okay, well, hold on one sec. Uh, I'll, so I'll, let I'll, Alex finish. I yeah, let Alex finish. Yeah. That's my fault. Um, no, you're good. You're okay. When, when we made this, I, you know, I told you my intention, and I think, you know, I just care so much about you. And I'm sorry that, like, hearing you say all this, actually makes me feel good because i've been texting being like what's going on like what did i do what did i do and so well, at least at least now it's on the public stage and like i know how you feel about everything if you love and, me if you love me it's you keep saying you do you have to be you have to love me and not hurt me you see that i, that's, I that's, hear you the, I'm, okay. I'm and sorry i want to smiling. say something to olivia olive are you there olive she's hey. here yeah me? she's there so, no not no <laughs> You're I'm a, not you. You're a, you're a person, Olivia, who's believed in me. You were one of the first people on my team a year ago. And I will say something because after listening to Ethan, I think he's right. Sometimes I'm a little hard on Olivia on the streets when she doesn't film exactly right or whatever. Because I get I get impatient and I get I'm I'm, I'm a perfectionist. And sometimes I'm a little rough with her. And I, I'm going to admit that because right. I'm on And she works guy. for free, Jimmy, for and, Pete's sake. No, no. And I want to apologize for being like That's that. Good. That's good. That's nice. Truth, that, that, that girl there stands by you. And, and she does love me because she's not getting anything out of me. Maybe a meal. <laughs> I don't think anyone's doing it for the meal, is, Jimmy. Uh, no, no, no. What I'm saying. Certainly not her, Alex. No, exactly. But what I'm saying, Olivia, is sometimes. I get frustrated on the street when I'm not doing well. And then if they're not built, come on, let's go. We didn't get any footage. And I just want to say, I'm a little harsh or I don't mean it, but I, I just like to get out and hustle and get shit done. So I want to say to her, in, in, I just want to say I'm sorry sometimes when I'm a little rough with you. That's there awesome. you go. That's nice. I'm just trying to be nice. That's all. Do you accept that's that apology, heart. Olivia? That's from my heart. Um, yeah, I mean, both. She's a good person, I'm Olivia Detail. You really are. Deep you're down. Yeah. No, you're a good yeah. kid. I know it's you over here. Uh, I've known you over here. Hold on, let me uh, go ahead, Olivia. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think one, like, I think the whole reason why, like, there was even like turmoil between Alex and Jimmy to begin with is because they're both pretty blatant people. They will tell you how they're feeling. Like, you know, it's not like you can read their face just like how you can read mine. And I'm kind of like the same way of like. You know, I can, I can like sugarcoat things, but like, yeah, I'm like, I, I'll be blatant too. And like, I'll tell Jimmy he's not funny when he's not funny. So like, um, I, I do understand like, yeah, he's frustrated. He's in his own head. And like, sometimes he says things that are offering. Cause like, I'm just doing this for fun. Cause I love like the H3 podcast. Like Thank Jimmy's, you. So, well, you're like, basically you used to be in New York. You went to California. Jimmy's here for you on the East coast. <laughs> he's my rep over <laughs> there. I appreciate okay, yeah, that. Yeah. We are, we are. We so are. He's my live show in the I city. We're in New York every week. That's yeah, it. exactly. Come find me. I'm in New York. How about, remember that? And, yeah. then, and then Jimmy, is there anything you want to say to White Claw Gabe who's uh, mediated this? Well, I think White Claw Gabe's patient to, to still be on. Yeah, and I, I, I met White Claw Gabe at your live show. He's a super nice guy. And That's I didn't get true. to meet him too well. But um, he's, he seems like a good guy and a uh, little nutty like us. And uh, <laughs> nothing nothing but nice things to say about him. That's nice. 
All right, appreciate the love, bro. I know, I know, we've been Mike going for a really, is, really long time. Can ride shotgun and run New Jersey with me. You we've been going so, so long. Do we? Do we have time for the eel pit still? No, we definitely don't have time for oh, the eel pit. We are way over. It's like sick. Listen, I, Jimmy, I got to tell you something. This probably make you feel good. This show was supposed to end an hour and a half ago. No way. And I kept it going because I was so compelled by this impromptu um, meeting that I stayed well beyond. And I thank the crew for sticking around, too. I think we thank all you. understood that this was a historic moment. I want to apologize that I was a little rough. I I'm really hurting now. The movie's fine. I like the movie. But I'm just hurting things that happened. And I I'm okay now. And I think I'm feeling a little better since we talked the whole That's thing. That's good. I'm getting, I really was it. That's I'm good. I've really been trying to get you on the front. That's of honestly yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to get you Thank on the front. Thank you to, every, to everybody. That's so welcome. Alex and, uh, and everybody. Yep. Olivia. We okay. love you, Jim. Yeah, that's really nice to hear. I love hear. you guys a lot. Yeah. I need mean that. Thank yeah. you, guys. Thank and you Olivia, th thank you for being so nice and taking care of Jimmy. It, I mean, it's, yeah. it seems like you really do a lot for him, and I, and I thank you for, for doing that selflessly. That's very sweet of you. Well, thank you guys for, one, like, reading the chat and, the, <laughs> and then having us in the call, especially me, because I'm a little bit more, like, random. Like, I could be any revolving of faces of Jimmy's, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, um, to have me on, it meant a lot. You know, shout out to you guys. Shout yes. out to the crew. Thank shout you out for, to you. Uh, thank you for changing his diapers. Olivia. Yes, thank you. <laughs> no, oh, that, go that come on. I got to I gotta cover your shift, Zach. There you go. Uh, oh. <laughs> there it is. There it is, Zach. Uh oh. <laughs> Bingo. Is, Zach hey. Oh. Yeah, and, and thank you, Alex, for the wonderful documentary and caring so much. It truly is amazing, and I hope you don't feel bad about it. It really, really is a great work, and you should be proud of it. And I think everyone is really. I said that. I did, yeah, he did yeah. a great job. All right. Alex, to give you an idea, last night for the fourth time, I was in my bedroom, and I was able to figure out how to get a YouTube on my search on the infinity, and I watched it on the big screen, not on the computer. Then <laughs> All right. Last night. That's, yeah, that's yeah. the way you should watch it. Well, I, that's how I watched it last night. So. I appreciate that. Here it is. I, I, yep. All right, I guys, love you listen. A lot, please. Listen. Well, thank you, guys. I got to uh, say goodbye. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you for getting on the call. This truly was a historic evening, and I appreciate you guys so much. So thank you, thank you to everybody. And, um, what a day. I mean, my goodness. You never know what to expect here on the wow. 8 Podcast. Yeah, really you really, really never do. That to go that. You, you really never do. Uh -huh. One thing I can say for certain is that I truly believe that everybody's heart is in the right place here. Hmm. And sometimes, you know, things go sideways. Sometimes things don't come out the way you did. And it just seems that sometimes sorry is the hardest word, as Elton John is saying famously. <laughs> and I think we... we it's a very human interaction. I'm very grateful for everyone being so vulnerable. It's interesting. Thank you, Phid and thank you, Phidias. For, uh, Phidias, your thoughts on, the, on everything. Do you have a closing uh, thought? And another new person potentially comes in the li your life. It's like you compare, oh, what if we did? Oh, is she more beautiful? Is she more cool? Is she more loving? Is mm -hmm. she, like, did you have this as well? How is... for Phidias. We really capped it off perfectly. Alright. Guys, it is so fucking late. It's 6 o'clock. I gotta go. My computer died. I don't know how I'm gonna do the show tomorrow. Dude, oh. you're getting a Dell. All right. Dude, you're getting a Dell. It just doesn't turn on. It's fucking crazy. Uh, Too yeah, bad. I have to get more info, but uh, maybe try plugging it in? can figure you, something out. You come to my house if you want. And if it doesn't work, we just hang out. Yeah. <laughs> you could stream from here. Thank you. That's true. You can right. just come here and just do a, a member stream from here. That's true. And bring uh and bring the computer because I I could probably take I, a look at it. I suspect that the the power brick, it's an issue power supply. With that. I think we have an extra here. We could try swapping Is it. Is it out. a big juicer? Mm -hmm. Dude, let's do a PC fixing stream tomorrow. Oh, maybe that could be the stream. Yeah. 
Linus Tech Tips. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Troubleshoot that shit. All right, guys. Love you all so much. Thank you for watching. Thank you to all the members, you guys. I run New Jersey. I run New Jersey. No, nah, dude, I run New Jersey. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. We'll be back. Uh, members tomorrow, hopefully. I mean, yeah. I'm going to say 80% chance tomorrow. Sounds good. But Wednesday, 100% chance. Boom. Thank you, guys. Have a good night.